<laughs> All right. We are live, everyone. Hello and welcome. Wow, I got that up on there and that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> Hello and welcome, heroes, to Crit Academy's Extra Credit Patron Game. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this now, you're watching it in the future. However you are watching this, hopefully you will enjoy this. We are doing the um, Siege of Bordrin's Watch, um, part one of the Scales of War Adventure Path. Yes, that is fourth edition. Um, I'm a huge fan, and this is an awesome series of adventures, so on you if you don't like 4th edition. Uh, <laughs> um, I got a really great team again here. We got, uh, we'll go around and uh, introduce ourselves. I'll go first. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Total Dumas. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I am the host of the Crit Academy Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Every week we get together, talk about nerdy shit like D&D and stuff. We provide you inspiration, DM tips, player tips, monsters, all that jazz. Please consider checking us out. If you're super busy and don't have time to sit and watch hours of hours of video or listen to hours of podcasts, check out our new playlist called One Minute Dungeon Ma Dungeons & Dragons Tips. Uh, each video is one minute, and I squeeze a surprising lot in those one minute. Um, and also not as much as I would like, but I guess that's the point. It keeps me concise and quick. So check those out. You can watch them pretty quick in between... Uh, um drops from your uh dropping the kids off so uh all right let's go around the table really quick tell us who you are who you're playing and something interesting about your character uh lewis would you like to go first uh can i can i go second because i'm still trying i'm so sure I'm still trying to the i put you on this i put you on the spotlight it's okay we'll have troy go first because i know he's got a book uh, I'm Troy. I will be playing Alston Shock, also known as Shockwave, the human artificer. Uh, I am a human raised by rock gnome tinkers who travels the land, uh, offering my services and expertise in all things that go boom in exchange for uh, not having quite so many issues with the fact that things around me tend to go boom with the local governments. So I do what I can to keep things capiche. <laughs> awesome. I like it. Thank you very much. Uh, how about you, Steven? Um, I'm Steven. I'll be playing uh, a destiny cleric Asimar named Grim Reaper. <laughs> he, wear, he likes his Mail is all in black, and he has a, a, a scythe that he uses. It has a skull at the joint where the blade meets the shaft. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, is uh, Lewis ready? Uh, yes. Um, I so Abando is uh, worked. He worked as a mercenary for a while uh, for the Adventures for Hire Mercenaries Ooh, nice. uh, guild, guild. He was briefly employed by the Zentarim, and he is currently unemployed. Um, he is uh, total, totally a great pal. Uh, One hundred percent on the side of good and all that's righteous. Would never lie, cheat, or steal. And uh, he grew up in a small village inside of Baldur's Gate. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, sorry, I'm writing some notes down here. Creating a folder just for this adventure. Um, I probably should send you all the links so that you all can add your own notes and we can have one big list of notes as we go. Um, which I think would make it uh, really great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this. And post it into the uh, the general chat there, and you can uh, uh, pop it open and edit it as we go, and everyone will be able to uh, edit and change it and keep it updated as a team. That way, if one person misses it, we're all good to go. Sound like a plan? Oops, I totally didn't mean to do that. There we go. The went to the wrong channel there. There we go. We're good to go. <laughs> Uh, turn on my camera now. All right. So, uh, how about we, uh, get in, do you guys have any questions before me, before we get started? 
man, you guys are easy. One, yes, one question. Okay, what's that? Uh, you, I think, in the... Oh. Um, that the, there was a mention of, like, we could bring, carry over items from previous yes. adventures. Yes. Okay. Your yeah. items are bound to your player. Um, I'm not binding them to characters anymore. So the longer you okay. play, the more stacked your characters are going to be when you enter these games. Um, cool. because first of all, that just sounded better. And since we rotate so often, it seemed like a good way to, uh, reward players who show up. Um, that way you're not feeling like, well, we rotated out. Now I got to start all over again. But, uh, I also don't give out that many powerful items. So it's not like it's going to break anything and you'll find more and more consumable items than anything else. <laughs> um, that's why I'm rocking a, uh, plus two implement. Yeah. No, just you two. My picture go. Sorry, she was. Uh, she noticed we weren't streaming to Twitch or Facebook and wanted to make sure it wasn't an error, and it is not. We only stream to YouTube for these. Um, I don't want to <laughs> clog up all my other stuff with it. Uh, uh, all right, so um, let me see where I want to get to my little starting area here. Um, war approaches. A week ago, a call to arms sounded throughout Elsir Valley, summoning warriors to help and defend Bordrin's watch in the Stonehome Mountains far to the west. Word of an army of orcs on, on the march had spread through the Vale for months, but now it appeared that the rumors were true. You, along with militia groups and other adventuring parties from all over the Vale, have marched west until you've come across the city of Overlook, a large fortified community raised by dwarves centuries ago. Once there, you and the groups have been invited to attend the Council of Elders. So, uh, you guys... For the sakes of all of our adventures, you guys are an adventuring party just because I'm not going to try getting everyone together every time they get a new character in the game. It's just too much work for me, and I'm lazy, as we've discussed on many occasions. Um, so as you guys are entering the, the city, um, do you guys intend to go right to the, um, the, the Council of Elders in the High Hall, um, or do you wish to explore... Uh, Oh, oh, overlook a little bit before you progress. I'll leave that to you as a venturing party, what you would like to do. Uh, if we were summoned to the council, I would prefer to go right there. Anybody? Uh, same here. Same. Awesome. So as you guys uh, begin to enter the city, the city of Overlook stands on the eastern slopes of the Stoneholm Mountains. A... Uh, a hoary range of crumbling peaks as old as the world. The city's founding, uh, the city's founding lies sometime far back in the, the midst of time at the point after dwarves in this region threw off the shackles of slavery and, uh, and chased the giants and orcs west across the mountains. Um, and this city is, is very grandiose. Um, I think my feed is coming through yours there, Steven. So either if you could uh, adjust my sound coming out or put it on push to talk, that would be fantastic. Um, so uh, the the town, the city. Okay. Of, thank you. Uh, this city of stone stands uh, on the. Oh, I already talked about. I already read that part. Uh, the population here is quite a bit, um, easily over 10,000. Um, you guys, uh, the people of Overlook are mostly dwarves, humans, and halflings as you guys are walking through uh, the town. Though pockets of, you can see pockets of dragonborn occasionally, a tiefling, and a ladrin. Um, on your way up to the, the high hall, you pass Elf Town. Um, and as you guys are walking through, you kind of think, I don't know why they call it Elf Town. I can't say that I've actually seen an elf yet, except for the ones that are with you, which is, which one is the high elf, the half elf? That's, uh, uh, a, a bando. bando. Um, and it doesn't take any inspiration from the art. There's no like elven architecture. So it's kind of, 
um, an odd site as you're you're walking through. And all the towns have little you know, the little areas are broken up into different districts. You pass through uh, Elf Town through a place called the Nine Bells. Um, you're not sure if it has anything to do with the Nine Hells, but it sure looks like it belongs there. Uh, the district uh, smell uh, is really the, the, the streets is the bottom of the barrel. You expect you see narrow alleys, very filthy mud, dirt trampling through them all, um, decaying buildings. Um, as you start to make your way through there, you, this, the, um, the, the fecal stench kind of hangs in the air, kind of wishing you would have maybe came in, to, came in from a different entrance at this point as you guys are uh, weaving through the, the, this massive city. Um, you end up in an uh, area, the structures start to really stiffen a little bit, and you, they go from kind of these slight stone, mostly wood structures to clearly dwarven built grand buildings. Um, and they're just kind of sweeping and magnificent to behold. The uh, towers feature wide, sturdy bridges uh, of stone, each fitted with high railings to prevent, you know, accidents from people falling off, maybe one too many uh, bottles of ale. Uh, the, the people you experience are mostly kind of dwarves kind of caring about their business. The, a few non-dwarves are there, but it appears that it's pretty... Um, the, the city, as big as it is, seems to be like uh, groups of cliques, right? Certain areas have different types of people, but there's a, a main goal of each district. It's not um, – each different district is different passing through the, the trades town. Um, you walk by and you see a, a, an older gentleman who says, Have care in trades town. You can go there. And uh, with the full, you could come here with a full purse and come out with nothing more than a pail of beans. I promise you. <laughs> you start seeing other people kind of shove him away and are scamp or are trying to like sweep him away out of the crowd to to, to so that he, he doesn't drive off their sails. Um, and you guys end up kind of once again you're twisting and turning through these big, just this massive, gorgeous city. Um, and you arrive uh, at this absolutely gorgeous structure. Hang on a second. Yoink. You ever hate it when, uh, ever get it where your uh, look, uh, find button only works a little bit? <laughs> there it is, the, mm -hmm. this, the find feature in the art uh, things. All right, so, um, so as you approach, um, you guys have asked directions at this point and kind of got an idea where you're going. Everything's pretty well labeled. Um, you approach the uh, you approach a couple of people and kind of ask you know where it is and uh, a, a young lass says ah high hall yes it's over there it's the heart and soul of overlook you know um, high hall is where the the movers and shakers make all the decisions you'll find it right that way and she kind of points with a crooked finger uh, and as you you arrive you are kind of overwhelmed by the the size of this uh, this this area this high hall or um, it's where it's clearly where all the leaders are convening and the government, the, the core government of Overlook exists. You see a few folk that, you know, still live in High Hall, you know, since nearly every inch of available space is given over to the various, you know, ministries uh, making up the city's government. Um, aside from a few extremely wealthy folk, most of the people funnel out of High Hall uh, at the end of the day and maybe head to the different uh locations because you don't see much of like home buildings it's mostly like business structures um as far as you can tell um the the buildings are more than double uh uh <clears throat> Uh, buildings, buildings, and more buildings crowd the district. They're carved uh, facades telling ancient stories of historic dwarves uh, and the, the end of Age of Chains and other historic events that kind of have really shaped this whole whole region. Um, the, the There is something that stands out from some of the other places as you've been passing through and, you know, you the, the, the smells have kind of hit you. The overcrowding in this area... Um, has kind of created an unpleasant aroma in spite of the fact that they appear to be trying to keep like candles and lanterns that give off aromas, wax candles. Um, it's still kind of wafting up from the streets. Uh, and it's kind of, they're trying to keep it more nice, but clearly they're, they can't get rid of all of it. Um, so you hear, a uh, welcome to high hall friends. I am elder Kadrick. 
I don't much see the point in uh, banging words, so I'll lay it out for you. Come this way. And he escorts you, and you start to notice that it's not just you. There are just collections of other uh, adventuring crews, and you can spot them. They're in their their own kind of little cliques, and everyone mix and match of different races. Some people got some nice silvery armor. Others are are walking around in like kind of hodgepodge mixtures, um, probably weaker than you, you'd imagine, because you know you guys can afford at least a decent equip, decent equipment at this point. Um, and he says, uh, he kind of ushers you guys in. Um, there's people kind of standing around as he's making his way upstage. Do you want to interact with um, any of the people before he gives his big speech? Or maybe ask around or anything? Uh, hmm. I've just been, like, gawking. Like, look, <laughs> uh, just looking everywhere. Everything's fascinating. I've never seen anything like it. Just all over the place the whole time. Look at the architecture. Let's point at that thing. Oh my gosh, that's crazy! What the heck is he wearing? What is that over there? Have you ever seen that? Oh my god! <laughs> that's, um, that's what I've been doing for like this whole walk. A uh, a young woman or a middle aged woman kind of uh, looks over. It. She stops, you know, listening to her little group that's chatting and looks over and she says, "Ha! You newbies always get excited when you arrive." But I understand. It's overwhelming, isn't it? It's exciting, that's for sure. What about the other two of you? Um. <clears throat> yes, exciting is a word for it. <laughs> um, she says, uh, Well, if you need anybody to show you around, my name is Megan Swiftblade. And I run the Free Riders. That motley crew over there, and she kind of points over to a, another group, and you can see a, a mix of different uh, uh, people. You can see a, a, a hardy, gray-bearded dwarf, clearly a priest of Moradin. You can see the, the, um, the uh, emblem of Moradin on his pouch or on his like, shoulder, and you know he's got the holy symbol around his neck. You see a... Um, a sly um, elven uh, fellow. Um, at first you mistake him for a, a, a female because he's got long, slick hair um, and a very lean body, but athletic. It's not like um, that bad. You also notice uh, somebody holding a, a big tome, of, uh, likely probably a wizard of some sort, um, kind of... Uh, all discussing this chance and there's one guy who's very animated during this and he's his hands are flailing you can't hear what he's saying but clearly he's um um distraught about something but this man is like standing on top of a box to get everyone's attention while he's flailing about uh he is a uh uh some sort of halfling maybe a gnome uh, it's hard to tell from this distance. She says, but if you need anything, let us know. We've been around here for some time, and um, it could be over uh, overwhelming for sure. Uh, thank you. Kelimbor, bless you. I'm good, thanks. Last I need is another person preaching to me, and she shoots and darts an eye over at the big bearded uh, dwarf. She says, and it... And then at that point, there's a big, you know, pounding on the on a gavel or some such. And uh, he says, the the councilman, uh, Elder Cadric, uh, stands up and he says, War is upon us. A great host of orcs comes from the west. Their intention is clear. They will come through the mountains bent on slaughter. Those... They spare can look forward to a short life of slavery. Overlook and Bordron's watch in the mountains have long held fast against these raids. But our scouts say never has such an army gathered before. Thus, we turn to you, brave souls, to help defend not only Overlook, but also the Elsir Valley as a whole. And he kind of just takes a second and he glances. He's, uh, he's opening his hands wide to everyone. Uh, you can kind of hear people kind of chattering a little bit. When the orcs arrive, we're certain they will come up through the pass. 
We know this because we have already, um, there have already been attacks from the tunnels below. Compromising, compromising the fastness. The defenders have fought back the savages, but it is clear that the rest are coming, and quickly. So, here is the plan. Durkirk Forgeheart will lead the militias and most of you to bolster Boldrin's watch. And everyone's like cheering, Woo! Kill the orcs! Ah, get all die! Make them bleed! Orc trailblazers infest the tunnels below. So you, we've, so we've tasked their security to the far striders. And you hear, see a couple people kind of nudging around. Um, and one more mission remains though. We need a group to evacuate the monastery on the other side of the mountains. It's dangerous work, what with the orcs and all, but priests need a warning of what's to come if they don't already know. Do we have a group adventuring crew of volunteers? Ooh, ooh, over here. As you, uh, as you jump up, uh, that young, that lovely woman you just met and you're all cheering, she kind of walks up, she kind of looks at you and says, well, I was going to accept this. But I guess the free riders can wait their turn. Uh, he says, "You, what is the name of your crew?" And he points over there to Shockwave. Uh. He just gave you the finger. The finger. Um. So this is an opportunity for you guys to come up with a, a, a group name if you want. Just take a second because you're going to be referred to it for the rest of the game. So. Oh. Uh, Come on, as a crew, throw in some ideas. Let's go. <clears throat> the, so the, the free <laughs> riders and the far striders are the other ones. Free riders and far striders so far, yes. Um, there's also the uh, the uh, what did he call them? Uh, yeah, those those are the two. The far striders and the free. Uh, I keep wanting to say free. Freeloaders, but they're not freeloaders. <laughs> free, oh. free riders. Um, we Those, could be the uh, uh, the defenders, the home, de the home defenders. Um, it, it, you, you say that, and a person to the in the back says, "Do you live here?" <laughs> Um, we do not live here, but we will protect your home. That is what our name implies. Oh. All right. Any relation to the defenders? No relation. Um, uh, other they than they, 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 they defend more than just the home, just so you know. Maybe you're not as strong as them. I get it. And you look over, and it's just some, like, half-drunken... Uh, uh, dwarf with a, a twin red beard and braids and a big old axe on his back and two <laughs> two things of ale in his hands. So is that what you guys are going with? Or Didn't realize uh, this would be such an important and, and slowing decision. Yeah, I never come up with a game. I never think of it. Um... How about the out of towners? We're, we're actually uh, the home def home defenders is our is our former name. Uh, we uh, that's what we were formerly known as, of course. Um, now we're <laughs> known prince? as the uh, the strong uh, people. We're the strong people. <laughs> Everyone in every adventure in the room just looks. I was once part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Part of what? We're very strong, as as you can tell from our name. So I was part of one of Death Angel's group. Ah! Never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. Uh the the elder studs up and says, "It looks like we have our volunteers." We worship Calibor very devoutly. Yeah, yeah, nobody cares comes from the background. <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, the, uh, oh, shit, where am I at here? 
Okay, uh, the elder kind of just uh, points at you and he says, We have those that seek to head to the monastery. And then when uh, he says, You all can... Uh, what's his, I forgot his name already. If you have not been signed a task, please head over to Durkick Forge Hearts. Durkick Forge Hearts. Um, and you see just a little flag just kind of waving. The guy's just kind of looking down. Oh, he's reading a book, and he's just like this. He's like, that one over there. He may look uninterested. It's because he is, but he'll assign you your tasks. Um, and then as this kind of breaks, starts to break apart, um, he goes, uh, uh, Notes, 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 notes. He says, On your way out, you should know that the reward for each group that re succeeds and returns is a thousand gold pieces a group, divided Ooh. amongst yourselves as you wish. Any questions? Uh, I turn to my companions and I say, um, well, what do you what do what do you folks plan to do with your hundred gold each after we split it? Hundred gold? Yes, hundred gold each, right? A thousand for the group. I th I think he's role you role playing, it's, right? Or did I say this. the right thing? Oh, you're fine. He's role playing. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, shit. What did I say? <laughs> That's that's not math. That's not how math works. Well, listen, fellas, my math is not my strong suit, but uh, but I heard what I heard. Um, I'm sure when the time comes, we'll we'll, we'll divvy up the the winnings evenly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. <laughs> Uh, so as you guys are uh, talking amongst yourselves, you see this this big burly man um, walk up, and you you notice that he was uh, uh, he appears to be one of the group uh, identified as the Far Striders, um, and he walks up and he says very angrily, he says, "Should I remind the council of our previous engagement, our previous arrangement?" That makes more sense. <laughs> uh, Kadrick responds with a, a nod and, uh, give me, uh, everyone give me an insight check, please. <sighs> That's, yeah. It's gonna be a three. Uh, I got a 13. I just imagine Steven scrounging for his dice because he forgot to pull them out got to be able to whip your stuff out quick or the show will be over out quick like today <laughs> all right uh who got the 13 shockwave okay shockwave uh, um 24 okay shockwave and uh grim reaper um you guys actually can you spot a little uncomfortable a un little unease in the um, the elder uh, the elder's kind of vi visage, I guess, um, and he kind of does a very subtle um, placating gesture, and then he thanks everyone, and then the crowd kind of disperses, and you see the far striders leader for uh, a a, a, mo a few moments goes and speaks with the the elder in very uh, hushed tones. Uh, all right, so uh, you guys have your task. Um, you don't know where this place is at, unless you're uh, is your anybody's character from this area. I don't. I think we're assuming not. Um, so you'll probably have to uh, head over and speak with Durkin no. to get your instructions to figure out where you're going, um, or you can just ask some of the other adventurers. I suppose maybe they know. How do you, what do you guys, how do you want to do this, or how do you want to approach this? Uh, I'm going to start wandering over to Durkic. Um, the, 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 the lady on your way out, uh, says, uh, I should probably give her a nice hair color or something, right? She's got nice copper hair, um, uh, an athletic build, and, uh, she says, All right, fellas, 
do good work, slay some orcs, come back alive. Good deal. And she's like, good luck. Good luck. All right. We're going to do all of those things. All right. <laughs> Pick him up. Um, so you guys, <laughs> you guys, uh, approach this big guy. You're in this massive line. I mean, all these adventures were supposed to go in and I mean, it's, it's really crowded in here. So you're kind of just waiting in line for a few minutes. What are you guys doing to kind of pass the time while you're waiting in line to see Durkic? This is, it's kind of a busy city, right? Mm-hmm. Or there's people hustling um, and bustling. It's very, a lot of stuff going on. So I, I've never used this ability before, uh, but I think I want to look around and see if I can see any like thieves can't messages sort of like scrawled into anything or, you know, if there's anything sort of hidden in plain sight. Absolutely. You sure do. So as you're sitting around, um, you see, uh, uh, like a hidden, like, um, a little bit of, uh, to anybody else, all they would see is a tipped over uh, candle um, facing just the right angle towards a door that is the elders' council room, and it basically says, uh, the, and you see a, a little bit of scratches. To anybody else, they'd be like little scratches with like a dagger on the on the on the wall. And what you notice is there. It says, "Open after nine. And it's pointing to the elder council council uh, council's chambers. Open after nine is all it says. Cool. What time is it now? Oh fuck! I don't know. Hang on. Ish. Like <laughs> mid afternoon. Let's say it's mid afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what okay. came up on my die. Uh, <laughs> hadn't actually considered that like a schmuck. I I was so engrossed on making sure I described the city. I forgot to tell you what time of day it was. Um, and the weather is actually pretty nice. It's a bit chilly. It's a lot of wind. It's a little overcast, but the sun does break through the clouds occasionally. Um, all right. So has anybody got any like nervous habits or anything they do when they get impatient? Um, so uh, I have a homunculus servant, which takes the form of a, uh, a small like a tube, which... No, most people wouldn't recognize it, but it actually looks like a little tiny cannon with like little uh, uh, pods under it, and then real long, skinny claw arms. And most of the time, it uses those hands to perch up on my shoulder and just like point out and look around. But I actually have it then holding onto my chest, and I have my tinkering tools, and I've been poking, prodding, and checking his uh, uh, settings and his. Um, all his connections are good, and then, but then he'll climb back up onto my shoulder and start looking around, doing like the predator gun thing. Yep. Uh, while you're doing that, and it climbs back up, uh, another adventurer walks up. Um, she's got a, a a a big gauntlet on her hand, and you can see like crackling energy running through like these little tubes on it. Um, you're interested in, immediately in train. She's like, she laughs at you. <laughs> I remember my first. Uh, what are the homunculus? Homunculus. Ah, those are the days. Uh, you hear in the back, yeah, you were like nine, right? So he's about as strong as you when you were ten? Well, you know what? Not everyone evolves at the, or, uh, is at the same rate. She just wants to say, I, I appreciate the work you're doing, and that's a fine job. Um, and if you're interested, I'd be happy to give you some pointers. Um, and she pulls out this little scrap of, like, steel that's basically a business card. And if it's, like, uh, 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 Artificers Consortium, and she hands it to you. When you're ready, come give us a visit in uh, Waterdeep, okay? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. I would be thrilled to see it. <laughs> and I just, like, take it. I'm, like, checking it, looking it over it. Pop out a uh, goggle and start, like, looking to see if there's anything small written on it uh, or engraved into it. Very cool. Yeah, just... All right, what about Grim Reaper? Uh, Grim Reaper, it would be... Um... Anyone that comes by him, he'll be asking him, would you like to learn about the Lord and Savior of death, Kelimvor? Um, So you keep saying this over and over and over, and everyone's just looking at you and like, uh, in disgust. And then this white, pale-faced, um, very thin, lanky human uh, walks up to you, and uh, hang on a second, I think I got a name for him. Where is he at? 
Da -da -da. I says, oh, yes, ah, oh, Callum for. I remember those days. You know, he's not all that he cracked up to be, young one. Have you considered just defiling him? It's really great, I promise. Hmm? Defiling him? Oh, why would you want to do that? Well, let's be honest. He's the god of the dead, right? Why not spend your efforts in return him from the dead? And he and as he does that, this thing climbs out of his arm or out from underneath his robe, and it's a moving hand, and it runs back up his arm. He says, "Nothing is more reliable than the, those that have already entered his realm and returned." If you ever seek, if you really want to know power, might I recommend investigating the dark arts of necromancy? If you are, hmm. please come on over to the Grey Redoubt. I am Rufus Crumbly, and I would be happy to teach you the true ways of death. Or at least, the undeath. Eh? Well, it is a, it is a unique pleasure to meet you, Rufus. And I will be seeking your services. Uh -uh. Of course it is. I'm trying to think of a really cool calling card that a necromancer would have. He hands you each an ear with uh, his address carved into it. <laughs> They're different sizes. One's clearly from like a, a, a giant and another one's like, like, it's like index card size. And the other one is just like a, an elven ear. It's all pointy and shit. So it's wonderful, wonderful. You... Come find me when you're ready at the Grey Redoubt. Uh, anyway, so uh, with that, you guys are kind of mingling a little bit. Uh, an hour or so passes through this big-ass line. It's totally like D&D &D DMV, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys finally get up to uh, uh, Durkic. All right, who are you? What do you want? Where are you supposed to be going? I'm talking to you. Uh, I you like to know uh, more about the god of death? Shut up! <laughs> wait, I very, I very uh, quickly stuff the giant's ear in my pocket. Uh, uh, is this a dwarf? Uh, no, he's just a really big barrel-chested man that's shorter, okay. but he's not a dwarf. Okay. Uh, well, I, we're supposed to go to the the monastery. Ah, uh, yes, yes, the monastery. Ah, uh, I know of that. That's um, he starts flipping through his book. Um, yes, uh, if you head south to the, uh, Elsir River, and then take it to the west into the mountains, it's about an 18-mile trek, if I, uh, according to my work here. It should be pretty easy to find once you, you know, locate it. He kind of just looks at himself, realizing what he just said. Yes, uh, yeah, you should find it pretty quickly. Um, it's pretty simple, the, the, you can go... Head south uh, to Elsir River and up into the mountains to the west. Uh, I would say you can't miss it, but those bastards hit it pretty good. You might have to look around a little bit. Do, do you perhaps have a map, or is there somewhere we can acquire one? Oh, yes, yes, I can, I can give you a map. Um, he, pull, he starts looking through his bolt, and he rips out a page, and it's basically a region map that just has a dot on it, which is not nearly like detailed enough to help you in the mountains. Uh, he's like, uh, that's about all I got. It should get you there, at least the general vicinity. Um, shouldn't be too hard to find once you climb the mountains. I mean, they don't even lock the doors. Should be pretty easy, or so I'm hurt, told. I've never actually been there. I tried to go once. I got lost in the mountains. I mean, you should find it. It'll be all right, I promise. Um... Maybe somebody in the town might have a closer map, but unfortunately... Come for the map and give him a pamphlet about Kelimbor. <laughs> he, he grabs it from you gingerly, and he looks at this. Slips it into the back of his book. Fine, fine. Um, yes, this is all I've got for you. It should get you in the general vicinity. Um, once you get onto the path, though, you, it's pretty easy to follow. You just got to watch for the dangers. They don't arm the... Uh, they don't have guards or patrols or anything. Okay, thanks for the help and the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Be gone. Who's next? On. 
Um, so you have a good idea where to go. Um, but the map isn't zoomed in enough, I guess. Isn't uh, It's a very high-level map. So <laughs> it gives you an idea where to go. Um, and you probably can get there. Um, but you'll probably still have a little, might have a bit of trouble um, once you're in the mountains if you don't have somebody that can navigate mountains well. Does anybody here have proficiency in survival? Or any yes. reason they would know all the mountain stuff? Then you'll probably be okay. Survival. Yeah, you'll probably be okay. Um, but there are other maps available if you want to try to uh, reinforce your deci- or get additional support. You know, a GPS is great, but having an actual map helps too. So I'll leave that I, to you. Yeah, I want to trusting that this is a good sized dwarven town. I'm hoping there's a cartographer somewhere that we could uh, mm. find and and see if we about getting a map of the area. All righty. Um... As you guys are uh, 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 heading out of the the building and kind of shuffling along with the the massive crowd, like it's uh, <laughs> like it's Black Friday, <laughs> just everyone's like arm to arm pushing their way out, trying to get out of there. Um, you can hear some people in the back shouting. You kind of take a glance back and you see it's the 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 what is it? The Far Striders um, causing some dis- something. Somebody's discontent with something. A lot of shouting coming from them. Um, you can barely hear it over the, the din of the trampling of everyone. Um, you, as you guys get outside the high hall, um, Megan is her name. I think I, did I say her name? Um, Megan, Megan Swiftblade. Yeah. She says, uh, uh, Oh, Hey, Hey, you guys got a second. Hold up for a second. She waves you over. She says, uh, so are you going right out to business or are you, uh, searching the town? Uh, we wanted to see if we could find a cartographer so we have a better map. The uh, one they gave us isn't good. Yes, yes, I understand that. Uh, yes, um, we're the free riders for a reason. We give everyone a ride when they need help. Um, while we can't help you in your particular task because we got our own, um, I definitely can tell you, show you a little bit around the, the town, maybe figure out where you need to go. Um, you said you're looking for a chartographer. Um, so it depends on the quality you want and the amount of money you're willing to spend. Um, I can recommend heading over to the, uh, the, uh, the Elsir Consortium. Um, I know they have a bunch of, uh, the collections of maps and stuff there. Um, what, uh, what else? She turns to one of her, uh, her allies there. They mumble back and forth and, uh, she mentions you could also maybe check out, uh, the stone home treasures, maybe they, they may have one. Um, their stuff just kind of comes and goes, so they don't carry a particular stock. But the merchants there have uh, a variety of things, especially in regards to the, the, the local area. So uh, they may be able to help you. Or you could check out some of the inns. Um, you can head over to the Salty Mug. Um, uh, I think Kine over there uh, has does maps. I believe he was an ex-pirate, actually, if I recall. Um, and then the, the, the scruffy bearded dwarf says, Aye, yeah, that's right. Good man, good man. Um, and then she names off a... Uh, 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 um, uh, you can also check out the uh, the pig and bucket and the blister. Um, it's pretty seedy there. You could probably get a really good deal. Just it'd probably be the cheapest place to go, but be careful that you don't end up with a dagger in your back after you've made your purchase. Um, so I guess it's up to you. Um, she kind of. Uh, I was just going to say, she looks at her watch, and I have a watch. Um, she turns, she's being pulled, she says, well, it looks like we're off to uh, head to up to Bordin, Bordron's watch. So um, good luck on your adventures, and hopefully we will quell this uh, orcish uh, onslaught and quickly return to our lives. No? Hopefully. Good luck. Yes. And then Knock they, them dead. They carry on their way. So you guys have Thing. a couple of options right of where you want to go you just guys have to let me know which which direction you would like to go uh that first one the uh the one that's the like a nicer um the ellis consortium yes the l El- oh, oh shit what was it ellis can't remember my own shit i'll be reading it Ah, yeah, the Elsir Consortium. Um, so she had kind of given you some direction, so you guys make your way through this um, 
the 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 different sections of the the town and you do find this one in elf town um you can see uh like pictures of uh or not pictures like paintings of big very heavily busted uh um merchants so you assume that those must be the people that founded it or had something to do with it um you walk in and uh Um, you walk into this, and it is just jam-packed with... And not only is it one of the nicest buildings you've seen, very tall, and it's got like three stories, um, almost polished clean. is like somebody's actively, constantly keeping up on it. Um, but it's got a massive counter. You see uh, four young uh, females in their uh, early 20s um, standing behind the counter. There's a couple other adventurers kind of wandering around. There's, you know... Uh, Entire stands full of uh, miscellaneous, you know, basic adventuring gear. There's some potions and stuff on another wall. And you see just these giant um, uh, jars. Uh, uh, not jars. Uh, clay pot jars uh, full of wound up scrolls in them. Um, I'm going to go up to one of the, the women that look like they work there. And be like, uh, hi, uh, I'm I'm looking for a map of the area. Uh, do, you, do you point me in the right direction? She says, ah, yes, welcome, adventurer. Um, yes, what a uh, oh, map of the area? Define the area, the city. Uh, oh, sorry, Board? yes, yeah. no, between here and and the monastery. Um, oh, yes, we yes, need yes. to find the place, and I think I think I think we've got just the thing you need. Um, it's, uh, it's handcrafted. It's very nice. Just like every other, uh, cartography, it's not ink printed or anything. It's been hand drawn by the locals. So I'm sure it's very reliable. Um, she turns around and you see, uh, these giant, like, um, I almost want to say they look like, uh, library columns, you know, with like, but instead of books, they're like on these big rollers and they slide open. Um, and she walks into one. She says, yes, she pulls out one. She unrolls it. She gets a little kind of smirking and rolls it back up. Anything else, dear? Uh, uh, can, can I see it? Ah, yes. Good one. She, you see her. Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> you got a five? Um... <laughs> She kind of stumbles a little bit and then picks it up and then walks over and, and opens it all up for you and looks uh, looks legit. I mean, how how are you going to confirm it? <laughs> looks fine. I mean, it looks like a map, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got yep. It's zoomed in. It. It's zoomed into the local area, um, and it shows the the entrance to the mountains uh, into uh, where the monastery is. But isn't an actual chart of the the mountain path or anything. Is this what you want, dear? Uh, and I'm, I'm like gonna like look at it. I think so. All right. Well, that'll be uh, uh, fifty silver pieces, please. No, oh, no, that's sorry, that's wrong. Oh, Five yeah. silver okay. pieces. Um, in the meantime, what are the other, what are you other two doing while he's shopping for you guys? That's... I am, um, you looking at anything, pass, talking to people? Randomly passing out pamphlets about column four. How many do you have? Cause I want to kind of keep track of that now. <laughs> he said like making it rain pamphlets. Um, a, a lady walks up to you that, that grabs one of your pamphlets. Tell him, for eh? he have about a thousand in, a, in, in his, uh, bag of holding. Okay. All right. So he, uh, he goes to you and, uh, uh so this lady walks up. He says, oh, tell for, what can you tell me about him? Come, come on, dearie. I don't have all day. Oh, you do not, I do not know the Lord of death. Um, no, I am not dead. Why would I? He's there when you die. I have not died, so... Gonna need a little more if you're going to convert me. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. 
At least the last guy gave me a necklace, and he pulls out a necklace, and it's one of Mordrin. Sticks it back in. Oh, and this guy gave me a bracelet, and it's a it's one of Helm. <laughs> and all you're gonna give me is a pamphlet with no in instructions and no no nothing. Now you you're as right. a player, I'll, I'll give her a neck uh, a necklace that has a a a skull of a squirrel. Do you have something like that? The answer is yes. Just say yes. <laughs> in my bag of holding. Okay. She says, wonderful. How about uh, we meet uh, tomorrow for breakfast and you can tell me all about Kalimbo if you're still alive. Or if you've met him, because then you're, you know, I won't be able to interact with you. So come back before you meet him, okay? Share with me. All right? Good? Oh, by the way. All right. She reached out. Oh. Would you like to talk Good. about... Would you like to hear about my Lord and Savior, Torm? <laughs> she hands you another a pamphlet back and then says, Tomorrow we will discuss whose deity is better, and I will show you the true, <laughs> the true oh, path. Thank you. All right. Uh, and then what is uh, – what was uh, 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 a, ban a, a, a bando doing? A band – um, just sort of looking around to see if are there any unique items for give sale me, in this shop give that, me a that like, I wouldn't find. Okay. Uh, um, that is ten. Uh, yeah. So one of the most unique things about this place is the plethora of potions. Um, they are from all stretches around the realms. Um, a vast mixture of different colors. Um, that just blow your mind. They come in a variety of different containers. Um, some identified as just healing potion, like, uh, the potion healing, uh, potions of recuperative properties is what it says. And they're just a collection of them, but they're all different colors and they're all different, uh, sizes. Um, but then Do they, they have like price tags on them. <laughs> they, of course they don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's just a collection of potions. So. Um, you can see a few, uh, come with a variety that says offensive, another one that says, uh, defense, um, healing kind of words like those, uh, reinforcement mm -hmm. magic, I guess is a better term than defense. They wouldn't call it that. Right. Um, enhancement. You see a variety of different potions. Uh, a young woman walks up, a uh, nice, uh, short, uh, pixie haircut, um, about, you know, uh, five foot tall and says, Excuse me, sir. I see you peeking at these. Is can I interest you in anything? Hmm. Well, yeah. I, I normally um, do my potion shopping across town, but I happen to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd see if there's any discounts or deals on these exquisite-looking potions. Ah, yes. Well, of course. Well, as you know, the general pricing for healing potions is. Uh, uh, 50 gold pieces, but uh, we've got some really good stuff. She says, I really like this one. It is a seething healing potion of gluttony. It's a very popular among the more sinister type folks. Can I interest you in hmm. one? It is said um, that... Yes. Oh yes, I was going to ask what it, what it, what uh, is said about it. Well, apparently it connects you to Kalimvor, some deity, allows you to <laughs> harness their power for just a moment, infusing your your strikes with necrotic damage. Now I've never had one, so I can only be tell you what I've been told. I personally wouldn't drink those; they taste god awful. Um, there's also this one over here called the the cautious greater healing of preservation. Um, that does, is supposed to remove some curses and poison conditions in addition to um, paral paralysis and even still restoring your healing. Hmm. Can I interest I you would, in one? I, you know, I would be, I would be interested in the first one, but you, you, I'll be honest with you. I, maybe I shouldn't be giving you this information, but your competitor sells the same potion for. For, for 50 gold, right across the street, so. Oh, yeah? What is her name? Um, her, her name is uh, Branch. She's a... Give me a deception check. Druid. I love that! Branch named Druid, or Druid named Branch. That's cool. Uh, you have to beat uh, a 17 uh, insight. 
<laughs> uh, dang, I got a 13. <laughs> She's like, are you sure? Because I was told we have the lowest prices in town. Okay. So do you want I one or not? There's plenty of adventurers that I could be attending to, and I don't have all day. She's clearly getting impatient with you. You're taking up too much of her time. Every second she spends with um, you and your indecisiveness <laughs> is a lost sale. Do you want the potion uh, you said or not? 50, you said 55 gold, yes? Oh, that that's for a healing potion is 50 gold. You have to understand, mm. these are imbued with arcane secrets and traditions of that we can't. I cannot even explain to you. Um, but I'll tell you for a hundred gold pieces, I can, I can give you one of these potions. You can pick mm. up a seething one, a bubbling one, an ample, a sapping, a panicked, um, any one of them are up to you. Or you can take a, you can take a diet, you can take a chance and take at 75 and I'll give you a random one. It's called Ooh, the, the, yes. the, the bit bag, the bag discount. You ever do those at the, like the conventions where they got like a, bl- a, a brown bag that's cheaper, but you don't know what you're going to get till you open it. Is that what uh, you would like yes, to do? Yes, I will leave. I will leave my fate in the hands of Tamora. All right. Um, she says, "Oh, we got one!" And, and then you see, uh, you see this giant like chandelier full of potions come around, and it starts spinning around. And one shoots <laughs> out, and she holds out her hand and, and doesn't catch it, but it stops in midair with a magical hand, and it brings it down. She says, "Huh. Well, I hope that this works for you. It is a." Uh, <laughs> son of a bitch, you have a per- perpetual potion of warding. What that means is the, uh, a perpetual healing potion of warding. What that means is it magically refills its contents at dawn. Um, it heals for 2d4 plus 2. And until the end of your next turn, any creature who targets you with an attack or harmful spell must first make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. This doesn't uh, protect the warded creature from area effects such as explosions of fireball. Nice. That is the... Uh, perp- it fills itself every dawn? <laughs> yes. It's... Le- <laughs> it's- it's Huge. yeah. It it's uh makes it uh very very rare. Uh, I uh, uh I would argue legendary, um. Uh, but I'm still working on the kinks. Seventy five gold. Yeah, I'm working on the 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 kinks. It it's got a very low chance. I got a D one hundred, um, and it's one slot at ninety six. <laughs> While some of them are like three or four slots to increase it. But anyways, um, so it's a perpetual healing potion of warding. So, Dope. all right. Dang. So you guys uh. Anybody else want to try the the, the random slot uh the, the potion machine? How much did that cost? The random one is seventy five uh that. gold. I bought a lot of shit. I'm not gonna Okay. What about Grim uh, Reaper? He's he's too busy trying to pawn and sell his sell people on faith. <laughs> Yay? He's trying right. to Feed people the faith of death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think he will. I'd, I'd use my gold to buy other stuff. You could not have rolled. It. Well, that's not true. You could have rolled better because warding is not one of the more powerful ones. But anyways. All right. So uh, you guys get your map. You're ready to go. Um, you make your way out and start heading out at this point. Um, it is probably uh, late in the day. Um, so you start heading out. It's 18 miles. How do you want to make the track? Um, the city's big enough. You can probably pick up a wagon or, um, a carriage or some horses if you've got the funds. Um, I can find, um, a place where Kellenvor might be worshipped in the town. Um... Believe it or not, there is nine temples to gods uh, in here, and Kelimvor ain't one of them. Though I guess you can make your life's mission to change that. <laughs> that's what uh, in 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 nine bells. That's what it is. It's a district completely made up of temples. 
I mean, I, I would probably just walk. I know it's, but it's kind of late, so we wouldn't get there tonight. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, I guess I could try riding a horse. It's not, I, not really my thing. Well, um, you, you still would have to, something, to yeah, but... pick one up if that's what you guys want to do. So, you guys need to. Are you guys gonna walk then, or ride a horse? Ride, get horses. Horses are fifty gold a piece. Fifty gold a piece. Um... Um... I'd like to I'd like to discuss that with the stable master. Okay. Uh so you guys do uh head down into the what is the name of the area? Hang on. Uh the blister. So uh you you guys uh are kind of get directions in this massive city. Um, and you're pointed to the direction of the blister just because it happens to be, uh, the nearest exit as, uh, or there's only two really big entrances in here. And one of them, uh, is where the blister is. Um, and it's a rough and tumble section of the city. Um, I think, did, I don't know if I described exact, did I describe what that was earlier? No, I don't think so. Um, the, the blister is a rough and tumble section of the city populated by mercenaries, adventurers, and usually the traveling folk with, uh, uh that are a little on the broke side. Um, it's basically, uh, characterized mostly by its great number of wine sinks, taverns, pleasure dens, gambling halls, and, um, uh, bordellos. It is not a place you want to get lost in. <laughs> the, the buildings are a mix of timber and stone architecture styling ranging from, uh, uh, the gamut, old dwarven buildings, all that stuff, uh. The, the people, you spot humans, halfling, dragonborn. It's a very nice uh, mix, but everyone seems to be either a poor adventurer or just poor. Uh, <laughs> uh, all sorts of kind of orders waft from the, the, the area, including smells of exotic cuisine um, to be expect, uh, uh, to the expected stench of crowded, the crowded district. Uh, wood smoke hangs on the streets from the, the different buildings and mixes together with a, a very sinister kind of uh, smell. Um, you do find the, the stable master near the end of the blister, uh, and he... Uh, open that up. There we go. Let's change that to any. Um, all right. Uh, he says, uh, you guys kind of approach and there's just a collection of like, uh, a hundred stables all up and down. Uh, you can walk up and down them like a shopping aisle and there's stables on each side. Um, this is, yes. Can I help you? Greetings, friend. Normally, I do my horse renting on the other side of town, but I just happen to be in the neighborhood. And ah. would you believe that your competitor right across the town rents horses at a, at a rate of 45 gold pieces and is boasting to everyone that will listen? That that is that cheapest... bitch. I knew he was going to un undercut me. I know. I've Can been fighting it? with him. There isn't. There is. There's, there's, there's competitors on each major. Uh, there's horse stables on each end of the end of the um city where the two main entrance are um so go ahead and no i'm gonna let that one fly because it is a competitive business um so yeah so he the guy he runs his fingers through uh his tangled brown hair and it, he looks at you with his great eyes like i knew it he promised that we would keep the prices fair so that we both made a buck i knew it what of it who can you trust these days nobody Abbas, that bastard. Well, I think you can show him by uh, by by stealing some of his customers away, myself included. I'd rather do my business with a fair business horse trader like yourself. I suppose. What are you asking for? Forty-five. How long are you mm. going to keep it for? Um, fellows, how long? How long do you think we'll need these horses? Two days, uh, three. Uh, uh, did you know when the orcs are supposed to get here, or or how long this whole fight thing is going to be? Uh, well, the the order was put out a week ago that they've been advancing. Um, so any day now. So it they don't really know. It's just you know they found uh, a few of them here and there at the moment. Um, the army is up against the is is to 
um, the Borden, Bordren's watch or is almost there. So, uh, yeah, two or three days, I guess. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, how many are you guys going to need? One each. Oh, there's, uh, the, there's, uh, there's three of us. Then. Well, obviously, I can see that, but generally adventuring parties come with four or five people. So I didn't want to assume, you know what they say about assumptions. Do we what? still qualify for a group rate? Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> um. Well, I'm already trying to match match uh, Abbas's numbers. All right, so I can do I can do 130 for three horses for three days. Is that fair? Sounds fair. All right. And if you don't bring back my horses, I'm going to find you and make you pay. You're going to have to pay up. These are precious. Oh, I have every intention of bringing them back on time. Okay. Um, all right. So he, he saddles up the horses and sends you guys on your way. Um, you guys uh, start uh, galloping out of town. Um, the sun is still mildly high into the sky, um, but it is setting. Uh, can't, man, no, I, I like to hand wave travel usually, but one of the benefits of you guys getting a horse is I don't want to. Okay. All right. So the, the horses definitely help. You guys will be able to make the trek to the base of the mountains without, uh, any issues. So, uh, what is it you guys discuss uh, along the the route um, while on horseback? Uh, I spend a lot of the time talking to the horse, being like, okay, friend, we're going to do this. We're not falling. We're going to have a good time. Okay. Okay. Nope. Wow. You're okay. Nope. We're moving. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone give me animal handling checks, please. Uh, uh-huh. See if anybody pulls poorly. Yes, I think I'm done with that die. It started well, but it's not not doing so good for me now. Uh, There's a nine for me. Wonderful. What about uh, Grim and uh, Abanda? Grim Reaper got a thirteen. Also a thirteen. All right. So uh, as Shockwave is riding on his this this. Uh, golden maned uh, mare. Um, you guys make it up to the uh, the, <laughs> the uh, river. What did I say? What was the name of that river? Uh, the Elsir River. Um, and as you guys start kind of riding along the side, poor uh, Shockwave's horse kind of keeps going towards the water and getting close to the edge and getting her drinks and pull in and want, keeps pulling and she, unfortunately she ends up slip and poor shockwave stumbles and falls into the mud in the water um, oh, crap. <laughs> she kind of knickers and you swear it that looking into her eye that there's some sort of intelligence there she knew what she was doing um and you get all filthy and dirty so you guys uh start the track uh towards the mountain once you've hit the the um the El, uh, Elsier River. Um, off in the distance, you can see the the mountains like a uh, kind of a, a, a looming beast as you get closer and closer. Um, you end up, it's almost nightfall. You get towards the base of the mountain. The, the fickle wind delivers the, 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 uh, delivers the bleeding of goats or sheep but you can't really tell where they're coming from. You see a, a passing cloud temporarily envelops uh, uh, the, the mountains uh, at the top, and uh, you can kind of hear a little bit of birds call and the little bit of trees that there are um, as you make it to the base of the mountain. Um, your map has been pretty reliable so far. It's gotten you all the way here. Um, right at this point, the... River splits off into three directions, coming down from the mountain. Um, 
So according to your map, uh, Shockwave, it recommends taking uh, either two to the left. Um, but it's not, it says it, uh, it should get you there. Looks like they might converge uh, near or around the monastery, but one of them certainly uh, passes beyond it, and it's hard to tell on the map uh, which one exactly that it is. Um, so. I'm going to show the map to a, a bando. You said you were trained in survival? Yes. Great, so I'm going to show it to you and be like, okay, so... Uh, I'm I'm used to being a below ground, so I. Uh, what do you think the best way to go with this map and this route? Uh, would be. Well, uh, and I point to um very confidently point to uh the middlemost of the rivers, um and say. I, they they don't call me a bando map charter for nothing. Do they? That's convenient. Ha, right? <laughs> um, do you want to go ahead and give me a survival check then uh, with advantage because uh, Shockwave was able to get his hands on the map for you? Sure. Alright, uh, 14. Alright, so uh, you, you jump down from your uh, your uh, Shit, what's the name of that type of horse? The the starts with a P, Palo. Anyway, Palomino. Palomino, that's one. Uh, so you kind of jump off your uh, Palomino and you walk to the edge of the water. And um, as you're kind of looking at it, the, the headwaters of this river uh, appear to flow in a series of like waterfalls that drain uh, the mountains back into the valley towards the this side of the mountain. Um, and so, kind of looking at the way it um runs and the way it curves and looking at the map down uh you suspect that if you follow follow the the leftmost uh path it's likely to lead you uh up to it and uh give me a give me a a, a perception check there uh a bando uh, 10 um, and on top of it, you notice that the, the grass in the area is a little bit more worn, um, going one direction than another. Uh, it's likely some sort of traffic, but it's not r enough to say with a lot of confidence. But you think it's probably the far left most path, uh, river path that would get you to the, the monastery in the mountains. So not the one that I pointed to. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Which one? Which no? Which which which? I thought I said the most left. Oh no! I'm just I'm just asking. Like, was 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 a bando just wrong or like... no? Uh, no, bando bando was right. I apologize. I just mixed it up. Okay. Um. Uh. I because I think I pointed to the middle one. But yeah. Like, yeah. If he yeah. was wrong. He was wrong. It's fine. No. 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 You're you're fine. I uh okay. on my map, <laughs> my map is like really zo like zoomed out, so I can only like. Bear barely see which way it goes and then i just goofed up because i forgot which one i had picked um because honestly when i was giving you very vague descriptions on the map that's because my map is very vague <laughs> i'm not even kidding <laughs> um so yeah you think you know what it which one it is um but the the the, the sun is really starting to to crest the uh to crest the um the horizon. So, are you guys willing to venture into the uh, mountains uh, at dark, or uh, do no. you want to? <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to make camp? Well, that nope right there, just hanging out there up there. Um, yeah, consi right. considering the DM asked that way. <laughs> I assumed we'd go till night. If we get to the base of the mountain at night, would be good. So. Yeah, it's supposed um, to. It's supposed to take a lot longer if you did chose not to. And there's some other stops along the way. But uh, since you guys spent the money on the horses, it gives you actually quite the the leg up on some of the stuff. So, um, kudos to you. Uh, all right, you guys. Uh, so you're gonna make camp for the night. I imagine I, Grim yeah. is going to start preaching to everyone uh, over the campfire. <laughs> 
Talking about the the great uh, Kellen Vore. Thing he knows about Kellen. Uh, if he if he starts going like real crazy with preaching, um, I'm actually gonna take a uh, pen that I have and uh, use ma uh, magical tinkering to enchant it briefly with uh, a. Uh, can make it emit a, a, a sound or tone. And it's just going to be a, a whistling like song that I know as a kid. And I'm going to just stick that up here next to my collar. So I just tune him out and I'm just listening to the music. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right. So. Uh... A bando is going to make sure the horses are very well hobbled. Um, Take and... care of them. Yeah, like if there's, if there, I'm gonna, he's gonna set up his like sleeping area as close to them as possible. Okay. Um, there's a few different trees too. I mean, they're not really big, but they're, they're tall, tall, they're, they're tall enough and thick enough to lash a few, to lash the horses to. Um, you guys set up camp, you start a little fire. We'll also start preaching about going forward to his horse as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to the horses? That's hilarious. Um, all right, so uh, is anybody on watch or anything? I'll take first watch. Uh, I'll take second. I'm also going to... Uh, I'll, I'll take third um, watch, then. ...reach into a, my, my satchel and pull out a two-person tent, because bag of holding... It's awesome. <laughs> ...and set up my own little tent... And then my homunculus is going to perch because it does not sleep or suffer exhaustion. It's going to perch on the crossbeam of the tent. That's and cool. it has uh, vision and will stay awake and perched above my tent all night. Very cool. Just like a little unsleeping uh, turret just spinning around looking. Um, does it have ish commands to shoot anything? Or like, how does that work? Is it It's not sentient, is it? No. Um, is da, 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 let me see. It'll just it just make noise if it gets attacked. Pretty much. Okay. It looks it looks impressive. Um, <laughs> it has sixty foot dark vision and and <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it reminds me of those uh, fake security cameras where it's just the dome, but to think there's a camera there that's threatening, but it's not actually there. That's kind of what that thing reminds me of. Because I mean, if anything actually attacks it, I'll know. Yeah, well, other yeah. than that, no, it's not going to Okay. Do it. It's not going to be like, rear, rear, wake up, wake up. Uh, all right. So um, the night kind of uh, wanders on. A few different things uh, happen throughout the night. The, the sounds of howling wolves and a very large echoey noise that sounds like a bird like a like an eagle um i don't know they don't crow but um you know what I'm, the, the 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 screeching that they make uh happens throughout the night a couple times and it's whatever it is sounds bigger and deeper than you would think of like a traditional eagle or vulture or whatever it is um out in the distance kind of echoing off the the mountaintops um does anybody uh have uh want to give me uh trained in nature anybody trained in nature no. Okay, then everybody can go ahead and roll. Uh, wait, who's uh, who? Who's took the first watch? Uh, Abando. Okay. Uh, so give Abando, give me a nature check. All right. Is that uh, wisdom or intelligence? Uh, that's intelligence, I think. Nature is intelligence. Uh, Sixteen. Um, so you hear this, this large screeching, um, coming from creatures high in the sky above you. Um, it sounds like they might be eagles or something, but if there are eagles, they're huge. <laughs> and, uh, in addition to that, it sounds like a, um, uh, whatever they are, they're, they, they're might be fighting. Um, you can hear them kind of back and forth. Um, but unfortunately, uh, this, the distance that they're at in the, the darkness makes it hard to know what, uh, exactly they are. Um, you do spot up in the mountains, uh, a flare of light, 
um, in the distance. You can't see the source of light, but uh, imagine if there was light behind like a pillar or something. It, it kind of makes the, the range area around it glow um, and thrum, so it's probably a bunch of torchlight or so, something similar. Um, but it's very high in the mountains. Uh, your, your estimate, um, you're looking at probably a half a day's travel to get to that the top of this mountain uh, by foot. So uh, you don't know that uh, if it's that high up, if the horses are going to be able to um, make it the full way. Um, mm. All right, and then your, uh, your shift ends with not... Uh, uh, much excitement other than that. Um, I think it said that Shockwave, you kind of nudge Shockwave uh, wave up. I come out of my tent and uh, I have my, my like really oversized goggles with like a greenish tint to them and I pop those down and that's my goggles of dark vision. Sweet! Uh, so I've got my 60 foot of dark vision. Uh, and I'll go take my watch. Um, all it's right. my Oculus on my shoulder again. So you got this thing little kind of chittering on your shoulder. Uh, your buddy, uh, uh, Abando, uh, goes to rest and you're kind of meandering about. Um, uh, and you hear like this echoing bellow coming from in the distance. Do you want to give me a, uh, nature check, please? Nine. Um, the echo is familiar. Miss my character that had plus ten to everything. You uh, <laughs> right? Uh, you've heard these noises before. They're pretty recognizable. Um, it's certainly some sort of bear. Um, but unfortunately, with the echoing off the mountains in the distance, you can't really tell what kind. Um, but it certainly is uh bears in the uh mountainous area you're about to travel through. Um, you hear a bit of splash, uh, splashing, and then the horses begin to nicker in the water. Uh, I'm gonna go over next to the horses, see if I can see what's going on. All right, uh, with your your night vision goggles, there, um, you can see. Uh, where is this at? Hang on. You can see what looks like a very large cat drinking the water and looking up on, ominously uh, at the horses. I am going to um, uh, oops, that um, draw my my pistol mm -hmm. and. Um, stand over by the horses and, and watch the cat. Okay. Um, imagine the cat's like, it got its, uh, its front head down and it's just licking the water, um, as it looks at you. And then it takes a couple steps to the side and kind of strafes around you, um, and around the horses, uh, clearly, um, deciding whether to enjoy a meal or not. Um, it doesn't attack, um, but it crouches down and um, just kind of sits for a few minutes. I, uh, homunculus, I'm going to order him to fire his um, ba -ba -ba, force strike into the air above the cat, which will be a uh, uh, energetic beam, uh, purpose, purposely missing. It's going right, to go up right. above it. But uh, firing the beam weapon above it, and hopefully the flash will startle the All right, startle so, the cat and make it think twice. So your cannon charges up with this very much Iron Man repulsor blast noise, and releases this blast that shoots in with a flicker of light. It it, it jumps in like in the air like ten feet and freaks out and then scatters off into the distance. Um, and the rest of the night is pretty chill. Grim when I'm done. 
Uh, all right, Grim, uh, you wake up and uh, tra- trade places, and you're sitting preaching to the horses, I imagine. I warn him, warn him about the cat, but I tell him I think I scared it off. What is... uh? Okay. What is Grim doing during his time down on watch? Just trying to keep an eye out for an ear out for anything strange. Um, yeah. So, uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, um, perception check. Uh, 18 perception check. Um, so as you're sitting there reading through your Kalimvor pamphlet, uh, pre- preaching to your deity, um, you hear a, 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 a slithering and the, the sound of a, uh, uh, like a, a snake hiss. Uh, you quickly, uh, you quickly look over and you see a snake is wandering its way into the camp, um, as it's just slithering around. It comes probably within about, uh, five feet of you, um, uh, as you're sitting there. What are you going to, what do you want to do about it? Um... I I'll use a a word of radiance on it as a cantrip. Yeah. What's the save? Uh let's see. You must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Uh, it fails. Go ahead and give me oh, a wait. damage roll. Uh, a twelve con. Yeah, I don't I only rolled a three, so. <laughs> uh, okay, one d six. Yep. Okay. Six. Uh, a beam of unholy death light comes down and blasts it, and <laughs> smells like a barbecue Two now. In damage. How, what's that? What? Damage. You you must be cutting out. All I keep hearing is damage. Damage. It's only got one hit point anyway. Not that it matters, but. <laughs> um, it's three. Sears and a barbecue. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, that was three damage, though. Yep, you got it. It, uh, it seared it and took it out. Um, do you eat it or anything? Do you do anything with the corpse? No, I just leave it where it lies. All right, so radiant damage on it. Uh, the rest of you guys uh, wake up and you see a big giant scorch mark with a, 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 a snake's what's left of a, a corpse of a snake uh, just kind of laying there. Um, you saddle up the horses and start making your way up the mountain, unless there's something else you guys wanted to do. I'm gonna take the snake and put it in my bag of holding. <laughs> it's a light snack for later. It's a uh poison and it's my experiment with that i see that i like that um Mm. all right so uh you guys uh share kind of what your experiences are over the night do you want to elaborate on that or do you just want me to continue forward and maybe open up Uh, yeah I i mentioned the screeching of giant birds i'm concerned that there's some like a mountain bear or something in the area um but i i don't know (laughs) <laughs> I'm concerned that if as we move uh-huh. up this mountain we're not going to be able to take the horses and then something's going to eat them if we leave them here so that's I'm going to hmm. I'm worried about that I mean you you uh, told that guy you'd bring his horses back and you know I don't know <laughs> what he's going to do to you you know like I, I mean doing so. I don't want anything bad to happen Yeah. 
Wow. We, uh, I, but that's it. I Otherwise, either make the horses try to climb or. I'll make just say that I preach to a snake and it burst into flame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. So, uh, so you guys are, are, is the goal to try to get the horses as far along as you can or leave them tied up here? Uh, I, I'd rather keep them moving just because something was nearby. Okay. Um, something already tried to eat them. So. Right, yeah. right. And then there was the cat, and you know, it, yeah, I scare it off once doesn't mean scare it forever. Moving as well. Yeah. Um, all right, so you guys kind of uh, jump on their horses back and, and start trying to make it up this winding path. Um, the trek in the wilderness, uh, up the mountain is slow and arduous. Um, the footing of the horses isn't quite as good as it should be, but fortunately for you, uh, you've got an excellent survival person here. So why don't you go ahead and give me a survival check, uh, uh, a bando so, uh, we can see where this goes. All right. That is a... 3020. Um, all right. So as you're oh, making your okay way, if I help him with this, if you want, I will say that I am not comfortable on horses. Uh, and if 17. it gets really treacherous, I will walk, like get down and walk the horse. So I'm, just really not inclined to take chances that this thing is going to chuck me off a mountain. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> uh, all right. So you guys start uh, uh, working your way up the mountain paths that are, they're very twisting and confusing, um, making it very easy to become lost. Luckily between um, Grim and Abando, you guys got a uh, pretty good agreement on which direction should be best to go. Um, there is a point where you get up to a large cr like crevice in the mountain that only has about a three foot wide um, uh, pathway to cross. Um, the horses could probably make it across. Um, it's wide enough, um, but there's also a uh, like a 40, 50 foot, 50 foot. Uh, a 50 foot drop down into this giant crevice or gorge, I guess is what was probably closely, more closely accurate. Um, how long is it? It said three feet wide, but how long? It, the path is about three feet wide and about, uh, um, it's really hard to tell at distance. You can see the big opening, but because of the mountain is not, if the area is not straight, it goes kind of out of view, but the crevice goes, um, for quite a while, probably easily 300 feet. Grim is okay. going to drop a pebble down into the cre crevice and see how long he has to wait to hear up anything. All right, you uh, chuck a pebble down there. Um, unfortunately, over the, the winds of the mountain, uh, it's kind of howling here a little bit, so it's hard to... can't really hear anything. Um, it's pretty far down, though. I mean, 50 feet or so. Uh, you can see the bottom, though. I mean, it's daylight. Um, it's just dark, covered, coated in shadow. Okay. It's not like an endless pit, so you can see the bottom. Makes it a little less threatening, I suppose. But you have to decide what is the, the next step. You can try circling back and looking for another route. Um, it's going to cost you time, though. Um, take that however you will. So what what's the plan, peeps? Um, Cross I'm definitely here. not riding my horse. Take the horses, leave them. Might be inclined to, like, feed them and see if they'll, I mean, if it does seem like they can fit. Yeah, I mean, looking at it, they could probably fit. I'd be alright trying to lead them for a bit, but... I think I might want to get down as well and just lead my horse through the gorge. As well. Along the cliff. Yeah, the band is going to do the same. Okay. Um, so you guys uh, drop down from your horses. Um, you ring them up and you start leading them across. Um, as, what is the, the marching order, I guess? I probably should know that. Uh, 
assuming I, the bandos I, are survivalist in front, myself yeah. in the middle, and uh, I'm in the back was my kind of assumption. Yeah, yeah. I'll take point. I would want to be in the back. Keeping an eye up yeah. behind us to make sure nothing comes up behind us to get us. Okay. Um, a bando, then shockwave, then grim. So as uh, as a bando, as you get to the edge of it, uh, or as soon as you get to the edge where the path starts, um, you start kind of leading the horse, and it starts to kind of um, uh, snicker at you, and it puts its he- its its hooves in into the ground and tries to kind of back away. I need you to give me an animal handling check. You can see in the, the the creature's nervousness and the way it shakes its head and the way it's pushing its its hooves back. It's not comfortable. What'd you get? I rolled a two. <laughs> um, so instead of trying to gently console it, you're just pulling on its rein. It's like, come on, you bastard. You're just tugging it along. Um, and it starts kind of um, moving, but it's clearly not, not liking it. I need you to give me a strength check. You have to beat a 17. And I don't. I rolled an 11. Um, the horse breaks free from your rein and pushes backwards and tries to run back down the mountain. I have to step away for a quick second. Be right back. He just lets it pass. Uh, right I'm going to run towards the horse and I am going to, if I can get close within 15 feet of it, throw a net at it. Oh, fantastic. Uh, let me check something out here. <laughs> uh, this thing moves 60 feet. Um, so um, what is the range of your net? 15 feet. Um, I will go ahead and make the attack, but at disadvantage. Or the, okay. the, throw, the net throw. I like the net idea. Poor horse is scared, stupid. Trap him in a net. That'll make him comfortable. I mean, I guess that goes with your <laughs> your two animal handing check. Yeah, um, I rolled an uh, I rolled a ten on that. Oh no, a dis- I rolled an eight on that. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the end of your net just captures uh, lands on its ass, but then just falls off the back of it as it just bolts down the mountain. And in a matter of seconds, it's gone. Uh, oh, so. It's turning into a very expensive mistake. <laughs> Minus one horse. Can I try and get, try and see if I can find a way to get the horse to stop? Uh, no, it's got it bolted it back I, down. Um, unless you've got a unless spell or something. Um, I gave him his reaction, but horses move very fast. Um, sixty feet already. So unless you got something that can get it within sixty, um, but I'm gonna say it's gone unless you got a spell or something the hell just happened there we go um all right so uh how do i mean is uh a bando react to that at all or uh well fellows uh my trusty steed turned out to be not so trusty <laughs> we're better off without him you're better off without him <laughs> um all right so uh you, as uh a bando starts making his way down the the path, I mean, it's a pretty good wide path, so there's not a check re- required. Um, uh, Shockwave, uh, you are in the middle, so you start pulling your horse, and once again, its feet start uh, pedaling its hooves, and it's kind of pulling oh. a little bit. Or you want to give me an animal handling check? Actually, once I see a Bando's horse take off, I'm like, you know what? This is not a good idea. And so what I'm going to do is lead it back a little away from the path, um, go to the edge of the cliff, and I'm going to take a... Uh, my pitons, uh, and I'm gonna sink it into the, um, to the rock face. Tie a, uh, the bridle to it, so I'm basically gonna hobble it by anchoring it to the mountain and mm-hmm. say, "This seems like a good idea." Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab some like stout branches that I see, um, and carry them into the ground and run some of my one of my things of rope out of my bag of holding make a light corral <laughs> uh, hopefully to keep some of the stuff away from it i love it <laughs> very cool all right so you uh branch together this little uh corral to keep it uh 
safe and secure while you uh, venture up to the monastery. I mean, I figure a bear will probably tri- rip right through it, but hopefully it'll keep something something away, keep it safe-ish. I'm envisioning like those those terrible uh, TV shows where people park their car on like a side street and just put a branch over it, hoping nobody will see it. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, you know, all right, like so it you know, uh, when in doubt, build yeah. something. Yeah, no, it's it's fine. Uh, why don't you give me a survival check, and we'll see how sturdy and strong this thing is. I was really hoping that'd be more like a tinkering thing, but I guess I can take my chances with survival. Ten, I think. Let me double um, check. Yes, ten. Yeah, you, uh, you get this one. nice little collection of uh, branches and stuff kind of piled up, and you look at it, and you're like... That's pretty damn good work I did there. <laughs> Nothing can penetrate this defense. Um, and you guys start making your trek <laughs> yeah. down the. Uh, you follow uh, a bando uh, down the, uh, the the three foot path. Um, Grim, uh, you get to the. And hopeful the, it won't explode. You get to the edge there, and <laughs> your horse just starts uh, putting its hooves to the uh, to the ground and pulling back. Do you want to give an animal handling check to uh, bring them there? Uh, try to get them to come over. Is that a yay or an A? Nat 20 for uh, 22 total. All right. So uh, the thing starts to get all apprehensive. You pull down on its rein and you run your hand through its up through its middle of its ears and kind of scratch it behind the ear and it kind of calms down and then it starts uh, padding uh, down the down the uh, path. Um, So the wind is picking up here um, a little bit. So you got to kind of. Seems exactly like what he would not do, (laughs) but whatever. (laughs) Um, all right. So you guys start making your way down this, uh, this kind of, uh, winding, um, pathway. Um, and it seems surprisingly sturdy. Um, you guys are uh, going pretty good. The wind's picking up your, your cloaks are, are billowing in the wind and all that jazz. And then, uh, as you are walking over the, the canyon kind of gets a little, the crevice gets a little deeper and deeper. It's probably like a, probably 70 feet, 80 feet now, um, where you're at. And then a bando, you hear a very familiar noise, a loud screeching of some sort of bird in the air. And you look up and you see this wide, um, this wide um, shadow cloaking da- coming down upon you. Uh, hang on. Da-da-da. Uh, <laughs> I should change, I change that. Hang on. All right, there it is. Uh, all right, so I found it. <laughs> um, and what you see is this strange-looking four-legged creature uh, with bird-like wings. Um, and, like, the head of, like, a hawk with the, the back end looks like a horse and it's got massive talons. As it's screeching and it swoops down and dives at you guys. Um, Shockwave, what are you gonna do? Uh, well, that's not good. Uh, so my best bet is going to be when it gets within thirty. Is it? Yeah, when it gets within thirty feet. I guess how far away is it? Um, right now it's diving right towards you, so I would say it's thirty. It's a good uh, short distance away. Um, you're very right, limited 30, in your mobility yeah. to only really two directions at the moment, unless you want to climb. Yeah, no. So I'm going <laughs> to uh, draw and fire my pistol. Okay. Is a twenty-one to hit? Yep. 
it will take 10 points of piercing damage. 10 points and then of piercing, my bonus said? action. My bonus action will be to tell my homunculus to fire its weapon, which is a attack. Spell attack modifier. Okay. Uh, is also 21 to hit. Yep. And that is a plus two is five points of force damage. Um, so as this thing dives down, um, you quickly uh, take aim, releasing your blasters, and your little uh, turret also releases its uh, uh, attacks. Um, and you se several p uh, feathers just out of its wings. Um, and it roars. It's, it doesn't roar. It screeches. Um, and then you, you have a moment of terror as you see another one behind it. But instead of coming towards you, it blasts off down the mountain um, in the distance. And uh, um, this thing, uh, you got feathers kind of just, you know, flying to the ground from it. Um, and it's screeching in pain. It slows its d uh, attack for a moment before reeling back in and, and flapping its wings and, and charging back in. Um, it's bleeding pretty profusely from your wounds, um, from your used a gun, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, a pistol. Yeah. And then the other one was like laser, lasers or force yeah, damage. A force, a force beam, yep. Um, and, and then I, I drop prone and take <laughs> like, <"Dah!" laughs> uh, All right, what are you going to do there, uh, uh, Grim? Um, I think I'm going to try. I am going to. And I don't got anything ranged. That's a terrible character. Wait, maybe I do. <laughs> I have like Throw a stick. I think I do actually. Even got some pebbles in it's a sling. The iconic I'll, tr I'll try it on. Um, Toll the dead. <laughs> Do you have Toll of the dead? I will. I will have Toll of the dead, and that is what I will use. <laughs> Sounds really good. Is that a saving throw or an attack roll? Uh, must succeed a DC twelve Wisdom saving throw. Oh, it's got a plus. It's got a plus one to that. Ooh, it's going to succeed at a 16. Damn. Um, what, is Toll, what does Toll of the Dead look like? Do you want it to... What does that look like? Does it say what that does? It's like a streak of black lightning you or something? Point at one creature you can see within range, and the sound of a Dolorous Bell fills the air around it for a moment. So this loud ring echoes throughout the ca the, 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 the mountains, um, and the thing just kind of, uh, its wings beat uh, for and stop for just a second, and it almost drops out of the sky, and then it starts beating again, as if it was, uh, wasn't quite affected by your, your strike. Uh, anything else, Grim? Um, let's see if I have anything with it. Oh, I think that's it. Uh, all right. It's going to... Uh, I don't want to be the person blamed for this, so I'm going to decide who it attacks randomly. <laughs> all right. Um, it's going to swoop in and uh, gra uh, try to grab onto poor, poor little Abando. Um, and it is going to try to grapple you. Hmm. Uh, plus three strength, uh, 15 contested check. Yep. Uh, he grabs me. Um, it grabs you and, um, and put its front talents dig into your, your shoulders with that grapple. It'll get an attack, uh, for a 12. I don't know that that's going to do it. Uh, that's against my AC. Yep. 
Uh, no, that misses. All right, so it digs its claws into you and starts beating its wings and pulls up. Now, you guys are all together, so, uh, well, you're prone. I guess you drop prone there, uh, uh, Shockwave, so you will ha- you all can get an opportunity attack um, as it starts to carry away uh, poor, <laughs> uh, poor Abando. So, Shockwave rolls terribly, and it's definitely going to miss. However, the homunculus also has a reaction, so he's going to take a shot, Mm -hmm. and is not technically prone. Ugh. Uh, Oh, 15? Does 15 hit? It does. And the homunculus gets a shot off. For a whole three points of damage. Um, all right, so it starts pulling out, and it's going to use its remaining movement uh, to fly 30 feet into the air above the the, the crevice in the mountain. Um, and you ha- it has you grappled, Abando. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I am going to. <laughs> uh, I was gonna... what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Sorry, I forgot Grimms gets one, too. My bad. What's your attack? Uh, your attack of opportunity. Swing at, at it with my uh, scythe, and I had a uh, uh, ten to hit. That's total. not gonna do it. Um, as you sw- wipe your scythe in the air, you catch nothing but feather. Um, as you swipe, and you feel little resistance as it beats off. <laughs> it does what? It beats its wings and takes off. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> and carries your put buddy uh, Abando with it. Abando, you're about 30 feet above the mountain ridge. The chill wind is, you are exposed to the chill wind. This thing is holding on to you with its talons from the front. What are you going to do? I almost took Featherfall. Almost isn't good enough. (laughs) Sure isn't. I was Uh, like, nah. I mean, it's very situational, but man, when you need it, you wish you had it. (laughs) Normally, as soon as it's available, I take it. And the Artificer doesn't have caster spell slots. So, Mm. yeah. Uh, What's up, Abando? You ready? This thing has got Uh, you by the shoulders. It's gone by the shoulders, and I'm about 30 feet up right now. Yep. You're 30 feet above the ledge. You're about 100 feet above the bottom of the pit. <laughs> Got it. Um, I – let me check something real quick. Uh, yeah, I know that's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> okay, I am going to, I'm going to attack the bird. That's, that's a great, that's great. That's what you're going to do? You're going to stab yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Let's make yeah, it happen. I have to ask about this. I have, um, uh, cause it's, it's too close to me to like make a, a ranged attack on it, right? Well, you can make a ranged attack, but it'll impose disadvantage on it. Okay. Can I can I use two weapon fighting and try to stab it with my short sword and then my dagger? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I want to try to do. Then. Yeah, no, you can do okay. a wield. Um he just has a hold of you. Your movement's zero, but if it becomes anything, <laughs> that's bad news for you. <laughs> yeah. I rolled a fifteen and then an eighteen for the two attacks. Uh yes, both of those will hit. Dope. All right, let's see what I do. So that is a six and a five. Um, your unorthodox position 
um, allows you to uh, your move to land unexpectedly and rake against the foe's uh, flesh. Um, your tactical maneuver up the center of its chest, followed by another another blow, um, takes you and ever takes the the monster by surprise, allowing you to cut its gut open and drop it out of the sky. Yeah. You are now falling. So everyone gets a reaction <laughs> to try to do a dexterity saving throw to try to catch him, to try to do something. I, okay, I have an idea. If anybody has a, a, a good one. idea, I'd like to hear it before I propose my idea. Uh, off in the, di- well, I'll wait until you guys are done here. Actually, I'll just go ahead and say it. Off in the um, distance, you see another one of these creatures carrying the 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 horse that ran away earlier in the distance. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try and catch him. Uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. DC is 15. A deck. <laughs> Is that a video? Can I like help in any way with that? Like, can I try to tuck yeah. into a catchable position? Oh, okay. The seven. It. I'm always boring if you record me when I'm not talking and only listening. <laughs> um, a seven, and you said you wanted to do something to. Uh... Yeah, is there any way I can like tuck into a more catchable position? Yeah, I was gonna try and catch him as he was. How would you I define? Idea, but I have to look this up. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think because the it would be so quick. I don't know that you would have time to like. Not react, but to like get into any position because basically falling thirty feet is like that. So yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a hard no on that just okay. because you weren't so <laughs> high up. Like if you were higher up, then maybe you would be able to guide yourself down. But once you cut it up and you both start falling out of the sky, there it's just it's a drop. Um, there's n- there's not really a time to say, hey, I'm gonna take out a Superman pose and stretch <laughs> out my hands. <laughs> what about? Uh, our boy uh, Shockwave. I have an idea, but I don't think it's something I could do fast enough to as a reaction. So if he good misses the can... grab, yeah, good thing I, I have. Can... I have an idea. Okay, well we'll see. Let's see what we can do. All right, so go ahead and give me a a save there, uh, Shockwave. You're gonna try to catch him. Oh, if they miss him, I want to cast the spell Catapult and launch the end of my rope. At a uh, a bando, can go ninety feet in a single casting. Just do that, because that is so much cooler. <laughs> it is, but if they can just catch him, I don't want to spend the spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, uh, Grim already missed, so if anybody's going to catch him, it's going to be you. Okay. All right, then oh, I'm going to use good. my first level spell slot, and I'm going to hurl. Uh, I'm just uh, have my my in my one hand was my pistol, the other hand was my my uh, all-purpose tool, which is my implement. And I'm just gonna stick it in my bag of holding, where it's gonna latch onto the end of my rope. I'm gonna flick it like this as I fire off the sp- the uh, spell, and it's gonna take that end of the rope out of the bag and shoot it straight at uh, um, Bando. Um, so Up, down whatever direction it is. Yeah, Bando. Uh, All right. Do you want to try to catch that? Give me. Uh, I definitely want to try a to dexterity catch that. saving throw at advantage. And I'm gonna even lower the DC because that's bitching. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll make it a twelve. I, oh, awesome! I got a twenty-three. Woo! All right, so. Our boy uh, Shockwave, you, you, so you're up there. You're being pulled up by this this giant gri- the, this, no, no this giant uh, creature, and um, you're like, eh, fuck it, and you just slice its gut open. You both fall out. You see, uh, 
uh, Grim reach out to try to grab you. Unfortunately, he just gets he just barely touches your clothes as you start falling. Um, Shockwave runs up, points, lit, lashes out, rope comes streaming towards you with ma- uh, uh, like a magical whip, and you qu- quickly wrap, wrap uh, get, grab it and wrap your hand around it, um, and you got a firm grip. I'll grab the other end. That's what I was waiting for. I was like, all right, you're falling yeah. still. <laughs> like you're just running out of rope as it comes out of the bag of holding. Um, Can all I right. try to do something that sure. I don't I don't know if I'll be able to actually pull this up. Well, uh, so I'm falling with the bird, right? It has like, yep. its claws in, in my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, now that I have the rope, I'm going to like reach up and try to grab one wing in each hand and see if I can like. Hank well, like, be like a kite at the end of the string, at the end of the rope. Oh, I'm gonna run out of rope real yeah. quick here. Um, <laughs> I would say that you wouldn't have enough time to tie a knot in this case. While I do, I love okay. the idea. Well, let's see if he can even hold you. He needs to give me a strength saving throw <laughs> uh, to see if he can actually hold you in place. Grim, are you gonna help? All right, Grant, that'll grant you advantage then. Uh, Strength uh, saving throw? Yep. Because oh, it's, an outside, it's an outside force pulling on you, so I would think a saving throw would be appropriate. 19. Nice. All right, so um, Gr- Grim and Shockwave dive for the rope. They get a fir- gr- hold on it. Um, it pulls taut, and you guys slide towards the edge. Heels it planted in the ground, and a big tight, and you hear a thud as poor, uh, <laughs> uh, poor Abando smacks into the side of the wall uh, as you got a hold of it. He's going to take... Um, six points of bludgeoning damage as you smash against the side of the wall, and then they start pulling you uh, up. You see the loud. Uh, you see uh, in the distance the uh, the 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 winged giant bird creature um, splatter into the ground, and then you once again you see the other version, the other one holding the horse, carrying it up towards the top of the mountain. Um, you guys take a quick. Uh, Breather, you get cr- you, poor uh, uh, poor Abando crawls up onto the the, the ledge there. Um, <laughs> the horse is uh, hysterical and is heeing and whinnying and and just dangerous. If somebody doesn't calm it down, it'll probably fall. Okay, I guess it's gonna fall. <laughs> like, um, how far away a, I, I'm on a cliff where there's an upset the horse. horse. I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Steven? Uh, is that horse, that bird like creature with the horse, is that 120 feet away? Yeah, it's farther than that. It's off in the distance flying to its uh, thing. Never mind. <laughs> horse you're worried about is the one right next to you. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna it fell. <laughs> so all it's heeing and hawing and it loses its grip and then falls down the end. Since everyone's reaction was I'm away from it or I'm gonna see if I can shoot that thing up there instead. So now <laughs> there is currently only one horse alive left. Well, I guess the one he's carrying is still alive at the moment, but uh... for now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was an expensive investment, wasn't it? <laughs> Would you say earlier an expensive mistake? Um, I promise Good you, thing though. We got a discount. I-, I do promise you, though. That guy might get one horse back. There was a benefit to that horse that um, uh, to that horse ride that, unfortunately, I'm never going to reveal to you. But it was it, sh- it just so you know it wasn't worthless. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so you guys uh, catch your uh, second <laughs> breath here and. Uh, um, begin making the, the trek back up the mountain. Um, and where is my thing here? Backwave will use mending to fix the, uh, uh, Allen holes in a bando's clothes and armor. Oh okay. yeah. Nice. That's pretty cool. That's cool. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, 
So uh, is, yeah, never mind. As you get closer towards the top of the mountain, your journey is plunged into bleak shadow as the sun eclipsed by the the nearby summit. Um, from this vantage point, you enjoy a commanding view of the entire valley below. That's only um, is only uh, ruined by the fact you know that uh, your horse is a splattering pile of goo in uh, a, 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 a crevice can- mountain canyon area. Um, so you guys make it towards the uh, top. I'm gonna need Constitution saving throws for the hike, please. DC's 14. 15. 11. <laughs> uh, you lose one uh, hit die um, from the okay. trek up, from the exhaustion. What about uh, you there, uh, Graham? He must have um, a really long delay. I got a uh, eight constitution. Um, yeah, so this hike is really um, pushing your body... Uh, um, to the, to, in your stamina reserves to, to the, to, uh, a, a, a tough point, a straining point. So you lose one hit die as well. Um, and then as you guys are heaving and hawing, you, breath can't get caught. You reach the summit and you see a, uh, um, uh, the, Uh, you spot the the monastery's entrance. Um, the outer walls stand about 50 feet tall, and plinth spaced at regular intervals reinforce it. Um, you can see that the access to its inner courtyard uh, is by a pair of 30-foot-tall double doors. Um, and that's really all you can see from this vantage point. But you found it. It's got a big, giant red roof and everything. Uh, what's cool hmm. is uh, there's like a big plateau here where this entire structure is built before the uh, up against the mountain as it continues to rise. It's a very it's a looming it's a looming structure with capped with a red tile roof. Bass reliefs adorn the exterior uh, um, walls and capture religious events and heroes in perfect stone carvings. Uh, what time of day is it? Uh, it's probably, uh, early afternoon. You guys been trying, it took you about, uh, nine hours or so to, um, trek to the, the, the mountaintop. Uh, I am going to, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jack Waves is going to be like, oh man, that is so cool. And he's going to reach into his bag and he's going to pull out a piece of paper his uh, uh, cast implement and he's going to use magical tinkering to create a static image on a non-magical object uh, and he's going to like look at the scene and as he's waving his uh, implement across the page mm-hmm. and that static image is going to be a picture of the monastery with the mountain backdrop and the oh, sun that's cool and that is so awesome. Take an inspiration He's point gonna... for that. Yes. That's cool. Love me some flavor, Flay. Grim would like to try and study the religious but... He's gonna he's gonna do what? Study the religious. Try and study something. the religious glyphs to see oh. what the stories depict. Give me a religion check. Is um ah oh, crap six. Um, it looks like a bunch of dwarves running around swinging axes and hammers. Um, y- you can't quite get a, a a good grasp of the the scene that's going on. Um, or it's in it's it's religious meaning, other than they clearly are running from something or fighting fighting something. Um, it's kind of hard to put it to any religious text. Um, so what's the plan? Are you guys going to head inside? I mean, this is where you were heading. Uh, 
I'm gonna drink my perpetual potion of yeah. warding real quick. Uh, I hope you wrote down what that does because I rolled that randomly. <laughs> Um, I wrote down it does some healing and it gives me a DC saving throw on the like the next attack against me uh, or something like that. Yeah, I, I'll, and then I'll it refills it down. I'll uh, I'll send you the the text for it for the uh, item because I mean I have it. I wrote the generator, so I've got all that okay. stuff. But I rolled it randomly and I closed the window, so I gotta go. Find got it. it. It's um, the healing I potion much... with sanctuary, right? Basically, yeah, What's, it's warding. So if oh, somebody okay. attacks you, they have to make a wisdom saving throw. I think the DC was 15. And if they fail, they have to attack somebody else or lose the okay. effect. Cool. Uh, how much healing does it do? It's just a regular one, I think, is what we rolled. So a two, 2d4 plus 2. Two, four, two, you right. should see some of the other shit that I got, man. I, went I would through love every, to. I went through every spell. I went through nice. every power. I made up my own. And I gave like a big list of affixes and suffixes, and then the base, uh, the base potions, which co cover a range of potions, and it just comes up with something random every time you roll on it. I did the same thing with weapons and armor. I'm actually working on a big project for it. I'm excited, along with all the other shit Ooh. that I'm doing, because I have the attention span of a gnat. <laughs> I like the I like this item though. Yeah, that's one of the harder ones to get because it's it's you gotta. I think you got like a four percent chance of landing on just the the um, the perpetual thing, which has a high rarity level because it refills on its own. Uh, totally didn't steal that at all from the flask from Path of Exile. I would never do that. <laughs> uh, all right, so the plan is to head in then. Uh, yes, yeah. I uh, want to look to see. Yeah. We're warning yeah. them that orcs are coming, right? Yeah, yeah, there's nobody nobody was able to reach them, so you have been sent here to let them know that orcs are coming and the assault's coming, blah, 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 all that jazz. I want to look around and see if I see any sign of the orcs beating us here. Um, mm -hmm. Give me a perception check. Five. Um, nothing really stands out. You look at the, the doors, you don't see any damage or anything. Um, there is smoke, uh, billowing from the other side of it. Um, but it's not, I mean, monks burn incense in, in bonfires and stuff. So that's probably not that uncommon. Okay. Looks good. <laughs> How's it look? Looks clear. Clear. <laughs> I thought you said it looked clear. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, as you approach, a grand edifice rises above the walls, which are about 50 feet tall. These walls encircle the entire compound and run up to the higher slopes of the mountain beyond. Um, as you guys push the doors open, there is no lock or anything on them. Um, they push wide open, and near the gate you see three bonfires burning where gray and green-skinned savages <laughs> Cook haunches of meat that look suspiciously like arms and legs. Um, God damn it. I'm going to die. <laughs> they're all eating their meat and they turn and kind of look at you guys. Then look back at each other. And instantly start playing rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings, fellows. Um, normally I do my human meat shopping at the other monastery on the right across the street but i just happened to be in the neighborhood how fortuitous that we met some some human meat merchants here <laughs> they're 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 playing rock paper scissors and then uh uh, of there's three groups by each uh, fire, and uh, each one has three of them. And three of them kind of look up. They finish their game, and they you see them kind of shake their heads, and then three of them kind of start moving, uh, moving towards you guys. And he looks at you. Mm, how do I want to do this? What you say? You far away. Um. Oh. I said. <laughs> You want to be kebab. I love a good kebab. No, no, no. Not be kebab. Buy a kebab. Thank you. I don't think so. They look at each other <laughs> and they slowly start picking up speed. This entire um, area 
uh, is easily over 100 feet wide, and it's about 200 feet to the back of the, um, uh, to the front of the monastery. It's this big giant courtyard. To the side, there's stairs that go up left and go up right to the top of the, the walls. Um, they start charging at you. Um, initiative rolls, please. Because I forgot to ask for new ones after it. Shame on me. Four. Oh, no. You got four, Abando? Yep. Nineteen for Grim. Nineteen for Grim? Seventeen for Shockwave. Exactly what I'm going to do. Go before them. Crossed. What did uh, a, a bando got a four, right? Four, yeah. It's too busy hawking meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're not really. I kind of wanted to role play that out a little bit. I was like, no, they're in the middle of war. They're not gonna stop and negotiate. Um, because <laughs> I was like, I was like, man, this is a, that's why I was kind of stunned. I was like, should I do this? I was like, well, no, because it's different than just running into a group randomly. They're they're actually at war. Um, so uh, a quick run over the area. Um, so I said you got the stairs leading up the battlements. Um, there are two rows of stone statues that line the approaching uh, uh, the approach to the doors of the monastery. They are uh, 30 feet apart. It's a big like opening. Um, and they're probably, I don't know, three feet thick. Um, so they make for good cover. Um, in the two rows, and then beyond them, another 20 feet uh, beyond them, are three giant uh, dwarven statues, probably 20 feet tall, and a base is about uh, five feet thick of dwarves in, like, battle poses and stuff. And then there's camp, a couple campfires uh, kind of scattered out. Um, as the dwarves start, or not the dwarves, as the, 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 the orcs start uh, charging towards you, they're grunting. The closer they get to you, you actually start to notice that they're, they've got blood on them and they've got some open wounds. And clearly they've already been in a, a serious battle. They're soaked in blood. Um, and uh, Grim, what are you going to do? Currently they are all a medium distance away. And it's a long distance away to the ones that didn't join in the battle. I'm going to text Alicia to get me water. Let's see if she does it. I will. <laughs> I will cast a uh, chill touch towards the nearest one. Which is... Oh, I gotta make a spell attack to hit. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Hope you guys got some good plans, because they certainly outnumber you. There's nine of them. And only three are charging Ooh. you at the moment, but... make sure. I just want to make sure that that's clear, right? Okay. Gonna hit one of the, one of those with the, one of the ones that are charging at us with the uh, skeletal. I mean the chill touch for twenty three to hit. Ooh, that's gonna do it. Would be six damage, and then creature cannot. Regain any hit points until the start of my next turn as a skeletal hand, ghostly skeletal hand appears in their space and clings to them. Well, that's no good. All right. Uh, okay. 
um, so that uh, skeletal hand kind of clings to him, and you see him kind of stumble, but he's got his axe, and he continues charging. You can see anger in his in his eyes. His you know his he's bellowing orcish you know battle cries. Um, anything else, Grim? Or yeah, Grim. Sorry, I gotta I should cross that out so I don't accidentally read the wrong names. Um. Yeah, I will bonus action cast Shield of Faith. On who? Then that'll be my turn. Who are you casting that you. on? I'm you. I'm myself. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, all right. What is, I'm myself. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, got it. Um, and that's concentration, so whenever you take damage, you have to roll for that. Uh, all right, so uh, the three orcs are bounding. Unfortunately, they are too far away um, to do anything with their axe. But as they're running, they shove their axe away and they pull uh, their big axes and pull out hand axes and just start lobbing them at you guys. So there are six axes come flying at each, two at each of you. So let's start with, that's going to be a miss. Uh, a 19, 22 to hit. Against a uh, shield of faith guy. That would be grim. Oh, shoot. 19 is my class right now. Okay, so it one of them does hit you for four slashing damage. Uh, two come flying over at uh, our boy uh, Abando. Um, the highest one is a 13. Does that hit? Uh, my AC is 13. All right, so it is going to hit. You're going to take yeah. uh, five points of slashing damage, and two more are going to come in towards uh, Shockwave. And I got a 21 on one of them and a two on the other. So um, for uh, four points of damage. Uh, slashing damage. So they just start hurling these things at you along with orcish insults about your mothers. Um, they start barreling towards you. The slashing pain kind of rips into you a little bit, but uh, because they're in a full stride, their aim isn't exactly super true. Um, but luckily, it looks like uh, just looking at them, they don't have any more on, the, on their person. Uh, all right, uh, Shockwave. These things are barreling towards you. There's three coming at us and uh, six I, in the I back. Do I need to roll for concentration? Uh, what, Grim? Unsave. Yeah. I got hit by one of those axes. So I got to roll for concentration then? I was yeah, it's the ten. It's either DC ten was. or uh, the damage, I think. Half the damage. damage. Whichever's higher, so it'd be ten. Because it's definitely, the ten is definitely higher. Uh, to see if it breaks. All right. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Shockwave. Yes, there's three charging towards you. Oh, that's and, an 18, so okay. no. The three charge towards you, um, and the other remaining six are just kind of continually eating. Um, clearly, th based on your impression, they don't seem super th threatened by you. All right. Um, so they're okay. They are medium distance away, so I'm going to draw my pistol and fire. Okay. At which one? Uh, at a leading one. Okay. Like that, chill yep. uh, uh So that'll be... 18 to hit. Yep. Or... Seven, eight, nine, nine points of piercing damage. Uh, yep. Uh, your bullet, uh, as he's charging at you with a murderous stare, uh, remaining fixed and, uh, pressured against you, uh, you pull out your firearm, you bust a cap in his ass, shooting out his eye, and he, he stumbles and falls right to the ground, skittering across the, the monastery floor. All right, then I will use my bonus action to tell my homunculus to fire at the next one. Yep. Which is a 20 to hit. Yep. Which is going to be... 3 points of force damage. 3 points? Yep. Okay. 
and oh. then I'm gonna have it move behind me for cover. Okay. Just, just basically from perching on my shoulder, it's just gonna climb around to my back. All right. Are you uh, gonna move anywhere? No, I'm just gonna stand there holding a gun and a shield. Okay, because there are pillars nearby that you could duck behind for some cover. Oh well, then yes, I will do that. Yeah, there, there's, there's, there's little like three foot diameter pillars lining this whole hallway there or this whole okay. pathway up to the uh up to the uh the monastery um there are two rows of well, them we, that are about we basically feet apart. pushed basically pushed open the doors and uh saw them right yes you interrupted their okay, meal so actually. i'm actually gonna step i'm gonna step like past the door like just take a step back and over behind the all right, I'm so you covering behind the door. All right, so you take so you actually will have full cover from any uh like arrows or javelins or anything like that. Um, all right, uh, nice. Uh, anything else from Shockwave? That's it for me. All right, uh, you're uh that thing they're charging towards you with their bloodthirsty gaze, and your little turret goes pew, <laughs> and uh, you see a bit of uh char blast off his shoulder and he stumbles a little bit once again the closer you get you can see that they've already been in the throes of battle you can see several wounds across their bodies already um what are you gonna do avando abando um they're charging right towards like towards me with like melee weapons yeah right? you all basically came uh in through the main entrance and they they played rock paper scissors and then charged uh and uh they do have melee weapons but they when they knew they weren't going to reach you they pulled out and threw their uh hand axes but they do have melee weapons and there's a couple javelins on their back oh no they don't have javelins these guys have hand axes so you don't see any on them other than the ones that are just watching all right, Abando is going to step directly into the path of whichever one is getting closest to him. Yep, there's one with a big old um, scar that was just shot by uh, by your buddy's little turret guy. Got a little blast perfect. in the shoulder. Uh, and Abando's going to stand there and ready in action. Um, he's going to take a small black silky handkerchief out of his pocket and sort of hold it delicately between his two fingers. Um, and the action that he's ready readying is when this orc gets within like six to eight feet of him, he's going to drop it on the ground. <laughs> he's going to unfold it all the way and drop it on the ground. What does it do as a DM so I know? Or do you want that to be a surprise? I think I know uh, what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that be a surprise. <laughs> or okay. I don't know. What do you, like, should I tell you? No, I it, tell you, you know what? what? I, I will let the, the monster do exactly what it would do. Continue charging. Okay. Um, okay. So you're readying your action, because I just envision like you're getting ready to do the Toro, Toro, but you're going to throw it on the ground. All right. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I know from, exactly uh, what he's about to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anything else from a bando? That is all a bando is going to do. So this thing is charging at you. Uh, you recognize a terrible uh, affliction of bloodlust that racks what stands before you. Um, rage and anger and battle craze, right? Uh Grim. Oh, wait, hang on. That one guy died. Another one takes his place. So there's uh, another... The You see in the background of the battle, just they're, they're playing rock, paper, scissors again. And as soon as the one falls, another one grabs in the battle and starts uh, rushing in. So there is still three. Uh, one has been blasted in the shoulder. Uh, two, and another one's right behind him. And then... So those two are a short distance away. And then the new one is still a medium distance away. Uh, Grim, what are you going to do? Grim. There's one that's sort of damaged, isn't there? Yeah, he's got a big chunk, you know, taken out of... Uh, technically, they're all pretty fucked up at this point um, from the battle they were already in, but the one's got the big blast in his shoulder from, uh... I will From the all the dead at that one. Okay. Well, no. Which one is charging towards uh, a bando? Uh, there's that two. One? Yeah, that one, and they're all charging directly towards you guys right now. They're far enough away that they're just kind of running towards you at the moment, because um, they're not quite in melee range yet. But they are heading towards a bando since you're you, you and a bando since uh, Shockwave took cover behind a uh, a door. <laughs> Um, 
there's another another orc that it looks kind of damaged, I would like to to cast Toll the Dead on that one. Okay. What is the save? And the target must succeed on a DC 12 wisdom. Nope, he's not going to do it. Save. He failed. Roll damage. All right, so now he's going to take 1D, 1d12 damage mm-hmm. since he's missing hit hit points. Right. Six damage. Six damage. Um, is that Toll of the Dead? The little spectral hand wraps around its Damn neck it. and squeezes. Or wait, is that the bell one? Shit, I think I'm mixing two. This is the two. bell. This is bell. Okay. Um, so a loud thunderous That's boom. That's the bell one. That's the yeah. bell one. Uh, rumbles around him. You see him grab his head for a second as he runs and tumbles and slides, skitters to a stop, uh, dead. Um, in the distance, you've... You, you see them, they're, they're continuing, right, they finally play. like, <laughs> and they're all going to join the battle in the next round. All right. Um, I'm going to use my movement to get behind my horse and use it as cover. Horse Your is horse died, bro. You choose not to save it. Remember? Off a cliff went splat. Yeah. When I said, "Hey, do you want to save it?" you time. said, Sorry. "No, I want to look well, at uh, I want to look at the the flying uh, hippogriff with the the horse it's flying away with." <laughs> no, can I? I'm gonna try to shoot it. Oh, okay. So it fell down. It fell to its. It fell right, to its I'll death. I'll try and. All right. Well then, um, I'll try and go behind a pillar for cover then. All right, uh, so you quick and uh, duck behind uh, a pillar. Just for clarification, it was possible to get the horses up here. It's just very hard, but it gets you quite the advantage if you could have got them up here because you could just steamroll over the orcs. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so uh, the orcs are up, and uh, at this point they're done playing uh, – uh, Rock, paper, scissors. paper, scissors. Yep. The rest of them start heading towards the, the stairs along the, the walls to both sides of you. Um, and they're going to use their dash action. Um, doesn't get them quite there. It gets them to, like, the base of the stairs. Um, so the other the other four are going to um, start separating up to the stairs um, to get some height. Meanwhile, the... Uh, there are now three coming at you. One is a short distance away and can close the gap with uh, with uh, a bando. And the other two are at a medium distance, so they're going to um, charge towards you but only get to a short distance, so they're going to launch uh, more hand axes um, at you. So we'll start with the, the short, close one first. I believe somebody had a ready to action. Um, let's see yep. what... Uh, uh, a bando has in up his sleeve. Uh, yes, I unfold the handkerchief and a um, six foot in diameter uh, circular um, hole appears <laughs> on the ground. It's ten feet deep. Uh, yep. <laughs> it just comes out it's of like nowhere. A Portable hole. That's yeah, cool. it's like a Bugs Bunny. It's Straight up, like, it's Bugs Bunny. It turns yep. into a portable hole. That's cool. Is that a class <laughs> feature, or is that an item you got? That is the rare item that I chose from the last adventure. <laughs> awesome. That's a just, that's a good use of that. Um, so it just uh, I'm gonna I say not to climb inside of it though. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think he deserves <laughs> at least a deck save to try to catch himself from falling to the bottom. Which he's not going to do, so he's charging at you, the anger in his face, he's got his axe, he's running at you, and then just like out of a a cartoon, he stops mid-air, looks down, and then you get the little whoosh as he falls into the pit. (laughs) Because, you know, that had to be cartoony, right? Uh, all right, the uh, the other ones, uh, they have their axe, they're chucking them, and they're going to launch them... uh, 
right at you because the other guy took cover. So you have four axes, hand axes coming at you. Uh, a seven's not going to hit. A 15 will hit. A five won't hit. And um, an 11 doesn't hit. So I think only one got you. You're nice. lucky. You're a lucky bastard. The other two went and hit. I just threw four axes at you and only one hit you. Um, ooh, but that's going to hurt. Uh, that's going to be six points of uh, slashing damage. All right. The uh... is, is the Does the ward that I have on me affect that in any way? Oh, shit. I think it does. Uh, what, uh, let me, let me double check. Cause I don't, I don't think it says specifically melee. I think it is any attack, which means it might get wasted. So hang on a second. Let me open up my magic item generator. I have to go look it up all the time because, you know, <laughs> I don't have it. Uh... If it's the same as the sanctuary spell, it says, um, the Creature has to do a save, and then they, if they fail, they have to choose a new target or lose the attack. Yep, that's the exact same thing, effect. But normally it's meant to be once, not perpetual, where you can use it once a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just got a 20, so at least one. Is it all of them? Or is it the next? I, I don't know. Let the me read this. I think it's just the you. next attack, yep. so... Oh, it's any creature who attacks the warded creature. Yep. And it only, if, oh, it, if it works it, like Sanctuary, uh, it's all creatures and all attacks against you until you attack something else. Right. That's how Sanctuary works. And he, ha he hasn't... I have not done. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, he says put a hole in the ground. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. The first one is a nat 20, though, so that's going to succeed. The second one is a... Uh, Eight, so that's not going to do it. That one's a 16, and that one's a three. Um, I don't remember what order I which attack hit, though. Uh, so I'll say I won't, I'll say that he failed, um, because you reminded me and that they all fail, um, and they don't really. Well, he's still two of them still succeeded. So I'm going to say that you'll still take the, the damage. Okay. Um, because two, two of the four still succeeded, but I wasn't tracking which which role was which before you mentioned the wording. So, But that's still, okay. that, lasts, that lasts for a minute. So, uh, Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, God, you dropped that guy in the hole. He's going to try <laughs> to use an action to climb out. Okay. Oh come on! Come on! How hard, how hard is it? To, it's not how deep is it? Feet. Ten uh, feet. Oh, so he used all his movement just getting there, so he couldn't climb out even if he wanted to. Um, all I right. Mean, he landed prone, right? If he fell. Uh, I don't think if it's ten feet. I think if it's got to be higher than ten feet, doesn't it? I don't know. Yes, I, I assume he failed his check, so he. F Prone, but that's no, I didn't even make him roll a check. That was a trap, but I'm like, he's just gonna fall. <laughs> oh. uh, da -da -da. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we'll say he's prone, so he'll have to get up out of that. Uh, meanwhile, the other guys are trying to make their way up the top. Uh, what are you gonna do, Shockwave? The biggest cluster within 20 feet of each other. Uh, that would be either either side of the stairs. There is there two on each side, so... Okay, I can't get all four. No, they're, they ran One. different directions because they were already near... Uh, like when you walked in, there was two uh, piles over here and one uh, fire over here. And each one had three. And three of these ones came this way and then the rest of them went up. And they, they separated like that. Um, so there's two. I'm not gonna use right this on just two guys. If you wait, um, if you wait when they get up, if depending on what they do, they might all come together. Um, because yeah, that's a huge area. 
I mean, just between the the pole between the 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 uh, pillars yeah, the, is like thirty feet. One. All right. So yes, my bonus action. I'll tell my homunculus to fire on whoever's closest coming at us. Okay. Are you, you going to walk my, back into the area? Because right now you're outside. Yes, I'll, okay. Yeah, I'll step around the corner. Okay. And then um, I will ready spell um, if they all move together. Okay. Um, hear each other. Okay, so the trigger is when they get close together. Yeah. Like, I want to get at least, if, yeah, if I get the four of them, at least three, but preferably four, then 20 feet of each other. Okay. I'm going to write that down because that's probably going to trigger. And then the homunculus gets oof, 6 plus 7, 13 to hit. Uh, yes. Then that is... Right, right on the nose. 5 points of force damage. So uh, he takes a quick uh, pot shot at the one of the two that are charging uh, as it blasts right over top of the hole. Uh, it's kind of cool. You can see the the energy lights up the black hole for a second as it passes over. What uh, it's doing is it's it's got those hands mm-hmm. that I described, and it's got one on either sh- shoulder, and it's lifting itself up, coming up over, firing, and then dropping itself back <laughs> down behind my back. That's cool as hell. That reminds me of like in. Uh, I used to play the old armored core where you'd have a back unit and it would like take a shot and then, and then go back. That's exactly what he's doing. That's yep. cool as hell. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else from uh, Shockwave? Uh, not till my action goes off. Okay. Uh, a Bandel. All right. Uh, Bando. So I got a question. What happens if you pick up your portable hole while something's in it? That's a very good question. Uh, I can <laughs> I can use an action to close the portable hole. Um, if a if the hole is folded up, a creature within the extra dimensional space can use an action to make a DC ten strength check. Uh, on a successful check, they force their way out and appear within five feet of the hole okay. for the creature carrying it. Okay. Um. Which uh, is what I'm gonna so. How? <laughs> oh, I thought it. Oh, I thought I had to make that check while it was still open. You're right. That is how it's closed. All right. How close are we to like t- to the cliff's edge? How far away was the door? Oh, that was the the, the 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 walk is probably. Well, I, I probably can measure it on this map. Give me a second. Um, because you reach the top. About ninety feet. From the mm, front of okay. the door uh, to where you started, you started to come the last, the last uh, steps up to the plateau, where the the monastery is. That's from the door. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> I'm gonna fold up the uh, handkerchief, and as that's my action, and I'm gonna use my bonus action to dash. <laughs> Um, uh, my orc with a plus three <laughs> failed. <laughs> so is he? St- how long is he stuck inside there? Can he use an action on his turn? He can use an action on his turn for sure. Um, the forced its way out. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to try to do though is dash with my bonus action um, as close as possible to the cliff. <laughs> Oh, that gets you what? uh, Because I would say you're a long distance away, so that'll get you uh, a medium distance, so you're still a short distance away from the the cliff on your turn. And that's being generous. Because I think I know what you're going to do, and that sounds dope as fuck. (laughs) Uh, And that's going to end my turn. All right. uh, Grim. There are two uh, or four of the orcs have run up both sides of the stairs towards the top of the the, uh, the battlements, and there are two heading your way. One looks like it just had a uh, got blasted uh, by a, a, a magical arcane turret. Uh, 
One that looks like it just got blasted by a turret, I'm going to use Told the Dead on. Okay. Some uh, 12 saving throw. Yeah, um, I got a 3, so it's going to fail. I swear to God, I am going to cut somebody with an axe tonight. <laughs> I mean, the throwing axes cut people. That is not what I meant, and you know it. <laughs> That is, that is ten damage. Uh, Damn, ten necrotic damage. I mean, Woo. Um, once again, a loud roar or a loud bell ding, and you see him grab his head as he's in a full, full-on charge, and grabs his head and trembles and just starts fumbling and rolling, um, and lays lifeless on the ground. You guys feel badass yet? Mm-hmm. So my next turn. <laughs> yeah. It, you said my ready to action. Yeah, which is going to happen on their turn. So, Because I know exactly what you were trying to do. And it just oh, so happened oh. that my plan was to... <sighs> I mean, their plan. I'm going to uh, use my movement to take cover behind a, the pillar again. Okay. Y- you know what? Next time, I'm giving my orcs more than two hand axes. Because <laughs> I just realized the flaw in that like is big time. Like, At least when they have javelins, they have like four of them. But they only ever carry two hand axes. Why? Anyways, uh, alright, yeah. So, uh, you managed to, to take the one out. You ducked quickly behind a pillar. Um, the other orcs, I'll start with the... Uh, one that's still charging, um, and that's going to charge and is going to run up to the pillar it saw poor uh, uh, Grim hide behind, and a large, massive, great axe is going to swing in your direction, and the attack roll is a 17. I would say, well, I don't think cover applies in melee. I don't think. And you are going to take uh, that 11. That my shield of my shield of faith. I forgot about it. All right. Oh, thank you so much, sweetheart. My shield of faith has 19. No, it's fine. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Much better. Um, so as it comes smashing down, will you describe the way your Kelimvor inspired shield of faith looks like as it catches the blade? I'm, I'm kind of sad now, to be honest. Because <laughs> I can't imagine it's a golden light. A, a skeletal four shield like figure deflects the axe away from my character. The orc kind of stumbles in surprise and looks back at you, and he's swinging and smashing on it, and it keeps being blocked by that skeletal shield. Um, the other four are going up the, the sides of the battlements and come uh, towards to stand over top of the door. Okay. What all happens? Right. Seeing that all of the orcs have clustered, uh, I pull out my all-purpose tool, which as I'm pointing it, configures itself from its normal screwdriver-like appearance into a tube, which then goes... Did You see a glowing orb fly out towards them and burst like a phosphor grenade. That's and it cool. shoots glowing white balls that shoot out and stick to all the orcs, and they need to make a... Um, uh, dexterity saving throw DC is 15. Oh no, against my fairy fire. Nice. Uh, I got a six, I got a 14, I got a 19, and I got a seven. All right, so three of them failed are now glowing, and all attacks against them have advantage, and they cannot go invisible if they were to try that. 
Is that concentration? Yes. Okay. Wow. Um, that's gonna they, as if they aren't dying quick enough. Uh, all right. So they're glowing. They kind of stumble for a little bit. Um, as they look at all this stuff on them, they turn down and look at you, and all the they take their uh, um, their hand axes, and they all chuck them at you. So that is a 16. Am I, am I getting eight hand axes coming at me? No, you're getting four. Okay. 16 does not hit. It's uh, off it, the shield. Uh, 18. 18 hits. A 7. And misses. And uh, 20. So I think I only hits. two. Hit. So two of the axes. That's a four damage. Four yep. damage. Four damage. Wait, no, only two. I rolled three. Oops. <laughs> so take, eight? Yeah. Um, as they start chucking right. them down uh, out from you. I'm totally been inspired by those stupid hammer throwing uh, things in Mario. Where they're just... And that's all they're throw doing. <laughs> they're not very strong, but you get a lot of them. I'm really, really hurt, but I was able to maintain concentration. Thank awesome. God I have plus four. The other ones see they use their other uh, they throw their other uh, at their extra ones at the guy dashing away with their buddy trapped in a sleeve. So that's four coming at you. Oh, that's a six. <laughs> uh, nine. Uh, twenty. And sixteen. I think only two of those hit you, right, uh, uh, Abando? Oh yes, yeah, two of those hit me. Uh, if you roll a one another goddamn time, me and you're gonna have words. Uh, so four, and woohoo, five. So nine points of damage, slashing damage total. Um, just come flying at you. Uh, all right, uh, that's the it. That's all their turns. The melee one and then the four range ones. Shockwave, you're up. All right, I'm gonna get my pistol back up and fire it at one of the glowing ones. Mm -hmm. With advantage because he's glowing, and I'm gonna crit. Yes! Woo! Oh, thank God. Chef right. fire all right. All right. How does it end? Uh. I'm going to see that he's glowing, and I'm just going to lift the pistol up and just great shot. Drop oh, him he just he just falls heads uh, end over end from the battlement with a splat and a crunch on the ground in front of you. Then, as I after I fire the shot, I immediately roll over, and my eye pops up, and he fires at the next one that's glowing, okay. and gets a. Nine plus seven is sixteen to hit. That'll do it. Which is gonna be six points of damage. Finally rolled max. Six Ooh. points of damage, force damage. Um so then I'm gonna your your laser blasts him right in the jaw, and part of his jaw and his big tusk just gets blown out. He's stumbling and wary and he kinda looks confused. I'm gonna follow that that turn. The shot with a jump back behind the door. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, Avando. All right. I'm going to, um, and I'll use a bo my bonus action if I need to dash, but I'm going to get right up to uh, within about four or five feet of the edge of the cliff if I can. Yep, you can. And if you use and your just bonus kinda... action to dash, yes, you can. And just kind of un unfurl the handkerchief in the direction of the, the open air. All right. Uh, he comes tumbling out. I am going to give him a deck save to see if he can grab onto something on his way out. <laughs> Dex is not their strong suit at all. Um, so. Uh, he manages to grab onto the end for for uh, he's got a nice good hold and he's trying to pull himself up. Um, but he doesn't look like he can hold it. Do you give him a little nudge? Yeah, I kind of, uh, I kind of like very delicately, like pull the, 
the one end of the handkerchief away. <laughs> and then he just, poof, and he falls, and he just tumbles. You see him smashing his, his body, twisting and turning as he hits rocks as he tumbles down. Looks a lot like that hippogriff you fought earlier at this point as it splatters to the ground. Um, that's horse shit, by the way. All right. Um, you used your uh, movement and your bonus. Um, I think, is it uh, an action to unfurl that, does it say? Yeah, that's that's an action. Okay. Um, all right, and that leaves you at the edge of the cliff. Uh, Grim, <laughs> uh, are you going to say, long live the king? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> this uh, is Sparta. <laughs> uh, uh, Grim. Um, so there's a guy right on me, right? Yes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds, which is a touch spell. Ooh, nice. That's a good one to use. Have right. to... Give me an attack roll, or is that a save? That's attack roll, right? Oh, that water tastes That's so an good. attack roll, yeah. Oh, nice. 19 plus 4. That'll do it. And that will be 3d10 damage Whew. of necrotic damage. Okay. Give her a roll. Ah. He just wrecked his shit. In necrotic damage. How much? Eighteen. Yeah. Necrotic damage. How does it end? One eight. How does your uh, necrotic uh, attack look like, and how does it kill him? Over to uh, reaches out, grabs his shoulder, and a uh, greenish light comes out of his hand, and then. All these uh, wounds start blasting out of him until he's nothing. Just nothing but ash. I love it. One less. I think you're down to three, you guys. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anything else from Grim? Uh, all right. Um, he's gonna just use his move it movement to. Take cover, and then that'll be it. It's the way to do it. I'm pretty. That's kind of how this battlefield was set up, right? Uh, all right. So uh, the remaining orcs um, are not super happy. Um, they are. Let me check something. Okay, yeah. The, uh, they... They are going to dash down to the ends of the battlement. Um, because I ran out of things to throw. <laughs> it worked a lot better in my head, I promise. Uh-huh. And they are going to, um, yeah, they're going to run back to the end of the battlements and they'll be able to get to the bottom, um, but they're stuck there at the battlements, uh, they're at the bottom of the, the, yeah, the bottom of the stairs of the battlements. Um, another one, uh, grabs a horn, uh, at the top and blows into it as loud as he can. Shit. Oh! And he does that a couple more times. So that guy will be stuck at the top of the battlements because he stopped to blow his, uh, toot his horn. Uh, hopefully to draw either reinforcements or let people, you know, know that there's intruders. Um, that is the end of their turn. Shockwave. You just heard him blow a horn. Reinforcements are coming. Um, the 
two that are, have come down, uh, are they the glowing ones, or is yes, he... right? That I'm going to shoot them. So, oh my god, another natural twenty! Nice. <laughs> he came in right. like a wrecking ball. So, do you want me to do max damage and roll, or roll two? Uh, you can well if you just do max damage, it kills him. That's the rule I use. So they, these guys are. <laughs> If you haven't figured it out, these guys were already wounded when you started. Yeah, so he's just gonna, um... Uh... Yeah, they come running down the stairs, and he's just going to, uh... Um, put one center mass to one orc, and then the other orc is gonna get the homunculus beam. That was less good. Uh, 12? Uh, that's not gonna do it. He ducks out of the way at the last second. Um, hiding behind what's left of his pal. <laughs> Can't do quite as many cool, fun things with a gun, though. Like, it's just like, you shoot him in the head. <laughs> you know? Uh, like, it's funny you say that. I the, had, the uh... Flourish of melee weapons. Did you ever, uh... You, you did play the, the Old Republic. You could treat it like the, uh... The, uh... What is the Han Solo class? Where they like throw up a coin and shoot the coin and it redirects the bullet. Shit like that could be kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. And bounce it off of walls and shit. Just call them trick shots. Um, yeah. But it, you're right. It is kind of harder with that. It's harder to make it sound cool. Uh, unless you just do it like behind the back and, you know, you do it the, uh, you, you spin it sideways and, you know, pull it from your holster, put it back in, throw one gun up in the air, shoot him with the other one. <laughs> Uh, alright, uh, is that it for Shockwave? Uh, duck back behind the... Yeah. So, I'm going to, uh, let Grim know that I'm hurting again. <laughs> Step back. Uh, a bando. You start heading back in? Uh... How many how many orcs are there? You can see There's one. Two. You can see one up top on the battlements. There's no other in your line of sight. As a player, I will tell or as a player, I will tell you that there there's still three total, two in the inside the building. But your character can only spot one on the top of the battlement. Um Yeah, I'm hurting pretty bad. I'm going to uh I'm going to fire my short bow at the guy at the top of the battlements and then Ooh. use my bonus action to try to hide. Make him dead. All right. Oh, I think. Oh, nice. Uh, that's a 19. For That'll the hit. do it. And five damage. Uh, he f tumbles from the top of the battlement and. Turns into a splattering pile of goo falling from 50 feet onto the ground, head first. Nice. Uh, night arrow caught him, like, right in the neck. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Spurt, spurt. I'm gonna hide behind the door, like, uh... uh you, you gonna join your like buddy there? Wave. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, you guys kind of chit-chat back and forth. There's only two left in the other side. Uh, all right, and... Uh, Grim. They're they're uh, the two that came down the stairs are right. a short distance away from um, you. Um so if you don't do something they're they're, they're yeah, they're a short distance away from you. Looking hurt at all? Uh they all look hurt cuz they were already pretty messed up, but none from this combat encounter, but they're glowing. So that's a thing. I just All right. I'll Whichever is closest, and... All right. You can pop number... That's a DC 12 wisdom saving throw. Uh, Seventeen. They'll succeed. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, as the, they don't take any damage. As he hears a gong, you see him shake his head a little bit, um, and you get the impression that this particular uh, orc... Uh, would ruin your day out of sheer spite if he uh, if he just seen you. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else? 
You can duck behind the thing. It's not going to really help you from unless they throw something. Uh, I'll use my else. movement to, uh, to take cover behind the pillar again. Um, give me a uh, 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 I don't know, because that's only going to protect you from range attacks, and they don't have any more of those. So uh, the two of them are going to uh, charge towards you since you're the only foe that they see with their great axe. One is a 24, and the other one is a uh, 11. I assume the 24 hits. Gonna hit, but the other one's going to miss. Yeah, the uh, they, they both come in uh, towards you. Axe is swinging, and they come around the pillar and pincer you between them. Um, you manage to duck below as one of the axes smashes into the, the, the stone column, and he kind of gets stuck, and he's trying to pull it. The other one catches you right towards the ribs, uh, and uh, you concentrate on the wound, trying to push the, the stunning pain out of your mind. Uh, it is hard to string any thoughts together um, as the pain overwhelms your, your stunned mind. Um, yeah. Ouch. Uh, uh how much damage is that? Oh, uh, that's eight on the die, so I think their strength modifier is three. Uh, eleven. Yeah, eleven. Oh! That's not good. What is, what does that mean? Are you down? Got one hit point left. Which is what oh, that means. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that is the end of the turn. Shockwave. They within five feet of each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just lost concentration. <laughs> that to look. My armor class is seventeen now. Uh. So the one that looks least injured of the two, I'm going to. So okay, so technically what I'm doing is readying because I'm gonna do this on my Oculus's turn. Okay. But um I'm going to point I'm gonna with my I um implement my all purpose tool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna point at the guys and then my homunculus is gonna fly over to them. While he's flying over, he's gonna take his one uh pot shot using my bonus action, use his pot shot at um Whichever one looks least damaged. That's an 18 to hit. That, that'll do it. Or six points of damage. Whoo! Takes out a big chunk out of his gut. He stumbles a little when bit. When he gets to... Uh, when he gets to being next to them, I react. my reaction is going to go off, or my, my ready to action is going to go off, which is going to trigger his reaction is going to be I'm holding up my my all-purpose tool and there's a flare of white light flashes on it but then at the same time a um a, the the homunculus flies with like a looks like the repulsor from Iron Man like there's this energy force energy coming out of the bottom of him that is going to flash in big blast and I am using channel magic to send Sword, bla sword burst to be cast out of my homunculus. That is cool. So both of them need to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Oh, you and the fuck, you guys in the goddamn deck saves. Ah, oh, son of a bitch, they're both gonna fail. Shit, that means one of them will die. They're gonna both no oh, shit, drop that die. Let's... They are both going to take five points of force damage. Um. All right, well, that's certainly going to drop them. The the swords come whirling out of this thing, the spectral swords, um, and they're uh, not. I I don't do the sword part. I just do like it's this like an explosion of force energy out of his uh, little repulsor thing. Oh, okay, I hits. see what you're saying. So you mechanically, it's the 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 sword. Mechanically, burst. it's sword. Okay, burst. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I got you. But you refer really, it to be an it's explosion. force explosion. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I got you. Um, one of them drops. Overloaded his thruster. Right. That's that's yeah, see that's cool. That's like you the can guys use, under him. You're saying how boring the pistol is, but you can do the the way you've got working with that thing is pretty dope. All right. So the blast rings out. Wait, does that hit? Uh... It's creatures, but I wanted to send it to the far side. It's creatures within five feet, so I want to okay. send it to the far okay. side okay. and above them, so it wouldn't I got hit you. him. 
Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, it sends one of them smack into the pillar. The pillar shatters, and so does his skull, and he falls to the ground. Uh, the other one stumbles back. Um, he's kind of, uh, he's shaking a little bit. He's kind of wobbly in his, in his boots. His ax looks like he's, he's barely got a grip on it. Um, you can see the, the murderous intent in his eyes. He's ready for blood. Um, he's going to go down. He's not going to go down without a fight, but he's hurting pretty bad. Uh, anything else from Shockwave? That's all Shockwave can do. All right. Uh, Avando. Wait, Abando. I keep putting a V there. It's Abando, like Abandon. Got it. Uh, Make him dead. Since I'm since I'm hiding, do I get to use my sneak attack? Absolutely, absolutely. Hell yeah! And you have advantage on it because it's glowing, because it still has the uh, the um, dude. You need to reflavor that uh, that uh, fairy fire is some sort of like targeting uh, guidance or something. It's kind of what I was going for with like the the phosphor glow. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. All right, uh, three plus four plus four plus four plus nine. Um, so I'm going to pop out of cover real quick with my short bow, uh, fire fire an arrow real quick, and it's actually going to do nine damage. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, that's all it's going to take. How does it end? Um, I I don't know because a bando immediately like like the 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 air the fletch. Just passes the front of the bow, and the bando covers his eyes and goes right back into hiding. So I don't know how it ends. So uh, don't even see it. <laughs> so Graham, this 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 uh, orc is standing over you. He pulls up his axe. He's swinging it high. Your shield has fallen. He gle- a bit of gleam in his eyes. He winds up, and an arrow pierces him right through his nose, and then he falls down. <laughs> All right, and I think and he lands on Grim, does one point of damage, and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to end it, because uh, I don't want to get into the description of the whole monastery and everything for everyone to have to for me to have to repeat it. So, um, yeah, I think that'll do it. Is there any actions you guys want to take? Um, to help with your characters or anything, so you don't got to dirt- worry about it uh, next time. Somebody already drank his potion, which wears off after uh, a minute. Can I try healing myself? Uh, Me, sure. Please. You can. <laughs> I the the uh, the horn that they were blasting was there like a distinct like sound that there it was just like one long blast and then a pause and then like one long blast um is that going to decipher the code yes to the yeah i i don't know what the blast uh noise made because i just you know it's a horn blowing but are you looking for anything particular that i can feed to you as far as information yeah, like what a, what a bando would be listening for is if there was any sort of pattern to it, um, like if it was a single blast repeated, he would tr- he would go up to the horn and maybe try like a double blast. Um, oh <laughs> man, you really trying to sound the off assuming, I got you. I got you. Signal, yeah. So okay, I did that with seven once. <laughs> give give yeah. You know what? Okay. Um. Give me an intelligence check to see if you just straight intelligence, and let's see if you can decipher yeah. anything. I'll, I'll set the DC really, really good at uh, I think thirteen is fair. Speak Orcish. Can I help him? It wasn't really speaking. No, so. just... Nice try, though. <laughs> Look at me fishing. I'm fishing. <laughs> Filling it in. I'm pretty generous sometimes, <laughs> but uh, what'd you get? Um, I got a. I got a fifteen. Uh, so you did identify the, the, the sound as three intermediate beeps. Um, in the, the roguish circle, um, this is often uh, a code for, um, like, emergency. Three, you know, long beeps. Um, so you, okay. you've heard that before. So you know that a solid beat, uh, blow for, like, five to ten seconds is the all, sound for the all clear. 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it one of those. All right. Give me a constitution saving th- or a constitution check. I don't know. I want to, I want to test your ability to take a deep breath and blow as powerful as an orc, but I don't really know what check that would be. Would that be constitution? Uh, so for th- <laughs> Well, for, for the for the first time for this character, I rolled a nat twenty. So <laughs> we're gonna count it. Uh, you just blow on this thing with I'm all your. A horn. All, <laughs> you're giving it that. Uh, you're giving it that that horn a great bl- uh, blow job at this point, and sounding the all clear, um, or so you think. You're pretty sure. Now then. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, do whatever you guys spells you have to heal up potions if you've got them. Um. Because there will be no short rest in between this and entering the uh, the uh, monastery. So, I guess you can hope more people show up next week that are fresh, I suppose. I'm going to start them at half health regardless. So, mm. this, is, this is supposed to wear down the party a lot, this first one. As opposed to, like, the hard battle being at the end sort of thing. Um, I guess I shouldn't be revealing all my secrets. All right, I think that'll do it for our game tonight. Um, the secrets, however, you always what? I'm bummed. I'm I only had two spell slots, and they're gone. And you're not a warlock. <laughs> Don't you get? Uh, do they have the same power that the uh, the the wizard gets with the the recharge half your uh, recharge spell? That sucks. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. I I would be more. Bonus action focused once I hit third level. Oh, convenient. So that it's not focusing on my uh, spell slots per se. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, part of this, the, these encounters and this goal of this was to have you guys all level up for the next one. So what I'll let you do is spend hit die as if you took a short rest, but I'm not giving you the benefits of a long rest. So if you level up and you gain any powers or any spell slots, those are considered full. Um, but anything expended beyond that is already low, because um, I want you to continue, but I don't I'm not giving you the opportunity to take a rest at the moment. So uh, you guys will earn enough experience to level up, um, and we will. You can deal with that when you come back, um, putting you at level three. Um, I think that'll do it for the first episode of Siege of Vordrin's Watch. Um, I hope that you that are watching this at now or in the future enjoyed it. Um, before we close out, uh, let's go around. Tell me who you are and what you liked about this, uh, adventure. Let's start with, uh, Grim. Oh my God. Uh, Circulation. Uh, hi, I'm Steven. I play Grim Reaper, the Destiny Cleric Asmar. Asmar. Um, uh, um, you know, somebody could take Next that as you didn't like anything. Lord of Death, that. eventually, and I was. Oh, I, uh, uh, I, I like that I didn't die this time. I got close. <laughs> if if you so much as tripped over a pebble, you're gonna be unconscious. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, all right. Uh, how about uh, you there, uh, Lewis? Uh, yeah, I played as uh, Abando Tratorius, and uh, it's my first time playing as a as a rogue. Um, also, my first time playing as a character that is actually a coward, and yes. I just tried to have a little fun with that. You did; it was really fun. All your deception stuff kept thro- kept throwing my ass off. I'm like, all right, what can I do about this? <laughs> but I think it was really cool. And dude, the 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 whole thing that's awesome. Like. I can totally see you coating the inside with like a poison or something. <laughs> Contact awesome. poison. Um, is there anything yeah, particular yeah. you enjoyed about this adventure? Uh, yeah, the the I like the, I like the setup of I like that it was like started right away in the middle of um, look here's your objective here's where we're going you're part of a team um, there's other there's other like pieces of this whole puzzle all coming together like that other factions are involved in so it's really cool that that's uh oh, it, i feel it, like it's building this whole meta game that's one of the reasons why i picked it because it gets pretty cool with the competitive adventurers so um uh, all right uh troy uh, i'm troy i played alston shock aka shockwave 
Uh, I love it. This is my my first artificer. Uh, amusingly enough, of all the artificers I thought I'd make, this was the, the lower on my list. But I go an artillerist next turn. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, my favorite part about the adventure, I thought we had some fun with the being able to riff uh, riff back and forth. Uh, like we're in a crowd, and oh hey, you know what are you doing to kill time? Oh, here's a person from. Artificer's Guild, seeing that what you are, and I'm trying to give out pamphlets for my God. Oh yeah, well let's talk about my God. You know, like I <laughs> was there was some of that like real world filler of being in a city that wasn't just adventurers walking in a bubble of their own importance, right? To a, a town of NPCs. So I liked that. Awesome. And I really liked all my reflavoring, and this is a fun it, guy. It was and... great. It was great. Um, well, that'll do it. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Hopefully you'll join us in a couple weeks or next month for part two. Uh, we'll continue from this. Hopefully it'll be the same party. Might be more people. We'll see. Um, if you don't know, I am Justin. I run the Dungeons and Dragons discussion podcast, Crit Academy. I'm also a best-selling DMs Guild and RPG designer and publisher and all that stuff. So please consider uh, maybe checking out some of my stuff. We just released the Werecat uh, playable race, the Skybreaker fighter archetype, because who the hell doesn't want to control gravity? You touch somebody and let them fall the other direction? How cool is that? Um, and then, of course, our War Mind, which is one of my first stabs at a cleric uh, scion. So uh, a little bit of divinity and psionic powers combined makes for an interesting character concept. So uh, make sure to check those out. Come and check us out tomorrow on the show at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, as, and every Sunday because tomorrow I'm super excited. We're doing magical uh, 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 magical adventure building. Uh, Remley Farr, uh, a very popular um, RPG designer, is joining us. And he's going to share his secret, which is using Magic the Gathering cards to build out plot settings in NPCs for adventures. So hopefully you'll come join us out. Well, that'll do it. Keep your blade sharp and spells prepared, heroes.